and welcome to another episode of The Grind Bin. I'm Mike Wood. I'm Chris Mann. I'm Chris Hughes. And I'm Bobby Trippett. And today we're going to be talking about 1988's Moving Target. Send some more body bags. We'll need them. It's Linda, bitch. Hey, Bobby, I got the money. Yeah, I made the team. But you're a hooker. Get that goddamn thing out of your mouth, bro. I said it, hooker. Oh. Spooky got, got, no, got, got, no, got no real rhythm. So guys, today we're talking about 1988's Moving Target. Not to be confused with the other movie uh, that came out in the same year called Moving Target. Not to be confused with 1988's Moving, Moving Target. Moving Target, yeah. uh, starring Jason Bateman, which somebody on the Grindman had watched instead of uh, the movie with Linda Blair for week three. That is true. Uh, that was me. I've got egg on my face. It's all right. Just chime in with your thoughts on Jason Bateman's Moving Target. Yeah. I will do a comparison Man, between uh, the two. So just at, at numerous points in yeah. the in the podcast, maybe you yeah. can just kind of cut in and go, well, in the other Moving Target. This uh, is what Jason Bateman yeah. would have done or he would do. What would Jason Bateman do? Yeah. So what was your recommendation on Jason Bateman's pretty Moving Target? It was pretty good. <laughs> you said not exactly been worthy, though. Not been worthy, but not bad. So uh, compared to Team Wolf, Teen Wolf 2 or Moving Target? Which one would you recommend? I watched uh, uh, Moving Target because he's got a band and they're terrible. Okay, well, yeah, that's, yeah, that sounds promising. good. Yeah. Well, maybe on another episode, we'll do that one. Chris yeah. has already got us. Uh, he's ahead on that one, but uh, behind today. So <laughs> if you ever... side of my head. If you ever wondered uh, what it's going to be like to listen to an episode <laughs> of The Grind Bin where somebody hasn't watched the movie, well... We're going to find out. Yep. Here, a special Blair Vember treat. Now, you know what's funny, man? Or is it Bait Vember for, <laughs> for Chris Van? It's, it's, it was really funny. Is there are some points when somebody has said to me before, they're like, I don't think man watches the movies. <laughs> so He watches some movies. I'm a passive watcher. I don't say a lot because it just if anything grabs me, then I'll say something. But I'm, I'm a very passive conversationalist, well, admittedly. I got to tell you, you missed a gem of a, of a movie. This mm. is honestly one of my favorite Grindbin movies. Mm. This is, uh, to me, I mean, spoilers for me, hard, hard, hard recommend. Compared to the first two movies we had to watch, this is Oscar worthy. You know, <laughs> you, you got you to gotta get a few pitches out of your system before you really start start throwing them in there. And now we've hit the sweet spot. Of oh, Blair yeah. Vember. This is Blair Vember week three. Yeah. Uh, this this would, is like the night force of the original Blair Vember. This is we the got true the Night Patrol oh, last time. Yeah. Ah, fuck. We did get through the Night Patrol. See, it's just like last Blair Vember. We got through the Murray Langston shit, and then we got to the real gem, which was the one right after it. Is there, starring is there Jason Bateman. There's not a monkey, ah, but shit. oh my God, man, when you hear the things that we're going to describe in this movie, <laughs> uh, it's one of the most disturbing movies I think okay. I've ever seen. The least amount of wardrobe I've ever seen in a movie. Uh-huh. Definitely. <laughs> Do- Hughes, I'm sorry. Do you have a phone? A rotary phone? What the fu- What the hell is that sound? Why is it ringing? Uh, Man, yeah, it's, it's underneath the table. Do you have tinnitus? Man, can you can you answer that? I mean, you didn't watch the movie. Yeah, Could on. you at least answer the phone? Yeah. Oh, Mr. Crown. Oh, what? Cuz they're uh Can we can we patch him in a to He doesn't want to talk podcast? to me, so I'll, you just talk to him. <laughs> can we patch him in? All right, he's in. Okay. That's what she said. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Crown, can you hear us? Yes, hello, boys. Hello? Hey, how you doing? It yes. has been a while, Mr. C. How you doing? Look, guys, uh, <laughs> I've been uh, hiding out of my desk for a few weeks now. This is, uh, are they, uh, it's been a little uncomfortable, if you know what I mean. A are lot these, of shit's been going down. Are those police choppers I hear in the background? I just, hey, don't joke about that, all right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you sound a little nervous, Mr. Crown. I, I'm living in fear every day. <laughs> Why are you afraid? Well, I heard, you know, this news about this Mullah guy that can send out indictments that all of a sudden you arrested. Uh, apparently they're doing that for Hollywood types too, so uh... But you've got certainly more than one alias, I assume, right? You've gone by other other hey, names. Let's, let's keep this on the down low. There's a uh, statute of limitations. You don't have to worry anymore. Oh, well, uh, does that extend a month? So, <laughs> oh, you know, I probably have said too much at this point. Uh, but Speaking boys, of extent, how many people are on your list that are accusing you of whatever okay, you're uh, afraid uh, of? Well, boys, I just wanted to call up <laughs> and, and, and wish you a happy Blair Vemba. Happy Blair Vemba to all of you. Uh, we know last year was a great success. I told you about the movie Night Force yeah. that I made. Yeah. Really love that one. Uh-huh. Uh, when they went down to that 
national, uh, in some sort of Central South America place, <laughs> yeah. where a bunch of kids, they went down and they, they went and find their friend, uh, some broad that got kidnapped. But, you know, uh, the monkey pin is named you, specifically. <laughs> Yes, that's true. It was uh, was my pet, actually, at some point. Bubbles? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so today, I'd like to say I, I heard you were covering one of my, my favorite movies I've ever produced, which is Moving Target, 1988, mm. starring Jason Bateman. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm good to go. Uh, he's a good kid, that Bateman, and uh, I don't really remember making this movie. I actually remember making one with uh, Linda Blair in it, but... Uh, I just heard recently she's not even in the movie, so I'm not sure which one I watched or made. I mean, there was a lot of lot of white powder going around. Powder? Um, yeah, powder. <laughs> what kind of haircut do you have, Mr. Crown? Uh, no, well, Probably a different one as of late. <laughs> I would like to say, though, that... Uh, no, 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 I did, I did produce this movie, and I'd like to say it's one of my finer moments. It's... Uh, I, I, I had this idea in my head where I wanted to kind of make a porno, but also make a real movie, and so I was very conflicted, and I said, let's kind of, let's straddle the line, if you will, you know? So you made a home video, like a home movie from vacation. Yeah, a home video of, yeah. uh... <laughs> That's my Italian coming out, by the way. I like that. Uh, you know, yes, this is one of my favorites. It's about a father and a daughter, and uh, the love that ensues. It's a very, uh, very touching story. And uh, it's also about a broad who won't leave a guy alone which is uh, exactly uh, what I'm calling about today, which is, uh, let me tell you something. If they come at you, it's not your fault, right? Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> well, All Mr. Right, no, Crown, no, they, uh, see, they see you differently, unfortunately. No opinions from the group the men. Uh, they see things a little differently. It's all... You know we're always on your side, Mr. C. It's just, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people hear what we say during these shows. Well, you know, I'm really disappointed, especially after you guys love Screwballs too so much, which was my story of my life, especially you, Mr. Trippett. I know that's one of your favorites. You still quote it very often in the show. Uh, so anyways, I better go, because I think I actually do hear Cyrus outside. I think your and, uh, line is tapped. Yeah, okay. Bye, well, Kevin. You know, don't be a stranger, Mr. Crown. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of good people out there that are going down, boys, and I just want you to know that uh, I'm not one of them. Oh, well, you're, I'm glad you're not getting railroaded. <laughs> Do I? What? Well, he's gone. I, I didn't even get a chance to ask him a you question. You didn't get a word in. I know. Well, I think he sounded yeah. a little hurried. He, he had some things he needed to say, and he needed to get out of there fast. I think. Yeah. Well, it's nice to hear from him. We haven't heard from Mr. Crown in a while. It's right? true. Um, he's been a little busy, I presume. Yeah, I think we're waiting for yeah. things to cool down before he might make another appearance. But maybe he'll make a phone call or two. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe oh. into the mini bin. Mr. Crown, we'd love it if you. I, first of all, if you join the Patreon, that would be nice. I mean, our <laughs> one billion aliases. It's Mr. Crown is on the move. <laughs> our one billionaire listener who won't even join the fucking two dollar tier. Mm-hmm. He won't even do the check. It out here. He said he'd check it out. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, guys, uh, we're talking about a movie that was made in 1988 today, but uh, it wasn't released until 1990. And it <laughs> mine was in 1988. <laughs> uh, the one you watched was a TV movie, believe it or not. It wasn't even released. You know, what, I, I had a sneaking suspicion with the full frame uh, presentation. <laughs> the commercial breaks. <laughs> the commercial breaks. <laughs> oh, well, you missed a gem of a beginning for this movie. There's no way this makes it on regular TV. Oh, no. No, no, no. No. Uh, you edit this for TV. It's 20 minutes long. Yeah. So we get to the background, guys, uh, which there is none. Uh, we're just going to get right into the cast and crew because there is literally nothing for this movie. We I don't mean, know how much it costs, how much it made. No, 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 no. This is, this is obviously some sort of either... Uh, this a, was a front operation. Well, either, yeah, either Mr. Crown's... Uh, personal vacation video or it's uh, a tax write-off so so up your alley got a theatrical release and this thing didn't oh absolutely not this huh. you thought this movie would be released in theaters yeah what's wrong with it <laughs> well i mean I'm with for one, on this. i'm not sure it's even r-rated I, I think it might be uh cinemax r i don't know i mean it's it's not it's like it's this is a porno what it's we're a, watching it's, it's today. a fleshy it's r <laughs> Well, how would you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing shit in. Well, it's, a, it's a hard than soft R. <laughs> at, well, at some point, they were like, you know what? It, it might actually be harder for you to uh, put back on the clothes, so why don't you just keep them off for the rest of the movie? You know? I, I like this precedence, by the way. What do you know, man? <laughs> so the, uh, so every time you try to say anything, <laughs> shut up, man. The uh, director and writer of this movie, uh, Marius Matei. Uh, man, you got the background for him, so why don't you I take sure it away? I do. 
he's a, a man that did many things. <laughs> well, not many, actually. Only five writing credits, <laughs> to me, three directing. Uh, 1968, he wrote a movie called Five Days in Sinai, which is an Italian-Israel production. It's a war movie. Right. Uh, 1972, he wrote a movie called The French Sex Murders. Uh, 1975, he wrote a movie called The Daughter of Emmanuel, which was a ripoff of the Emmanuel series, and they spelled Emmanuel differently. Yeah, so. it's, the, the Emmanuel series is like Sex Django. There, yeah, there's, like, <laughs> there's 25 movies with that character's name in the title, yeah. and they're not related a to each other. A lizard that has sex? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You know, oh, no, no, the tail not this disconnect. again. Not this again. Uh, Every and, time you bring up Django... He's yeah, going to come Rango, up with Rango. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. And we're, we're not going to explain it for any new listeners. You're just going to have to figure it out. Oh. So. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> 1980. <laughs> uh, 1980, he, he wrote and directed a movie called Happy Birthday, Harry, which <laughs> there's no plot available at all. But Pretty the sure poster, that's another one of Mr. Crown's videos. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the poster is insane. It's of two guys ogling a woman coming out of a cake. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Snuff film. Uh, she's got like... Um, Frosting for a bra, and they're just like, "Hey, you're coming out!" <laughs> As anyone's natural reaction. Is that what would they're be. saying or doing? That's what they're doing. They're <laughs> just—they kind of got their hands up like they just run, won at the roulette wheel. You know, they're like, "Hey!" <laughs> uh, Can we reenact that poster just for the four of us. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it on the the uh, oh, Twitter. I'm good for that. <laughs> uh, moving Target was the last thing he made, oh. uh, and guess what? He also appears in this movie. Really? He is the final camera operator, I believe, for the new truck. Remember how, like, all of a sudden the other guy's gone, and then there's, like, this bizarre short Italian man? Yeah. That's our director, you know, getting his, uh, kind of like his Andy Sedaris so cameo, one has to assume you know? the original guy just stormed off, and so he just <laughs> did it himself. He ran in and picked up the camera. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I'll do it myself. And he Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, this movie uh, top bills Linda Blair, but uh, as we'll find out, even though she's only in it for five minutes, uh, boy, is her presence felt. This was a real one sniff for Linda. <laughs> yeah, I think so. She stuck around for one. I think there was a bag of stuff involved yeah. and uh, a <laughs> little vacation a <laughs> in Miami, you know? That's what she calls an old one-bagger. <laughs> uh, this movie stars uh, Ernest Borgnine, who, uh, I mean, I don't know why he's in this movie. Apparently, he also needed a vacation and, and a one-bagger. I, I think he doesn't know why he's in this movie. <laughs> no, there's, there's no way. There's half the time I'm not sure he knew he was in this movie. There's actually a part when he kind of looks at the, the audience with like, that's in the script. That's what I was supposed to read. So, you know, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> he just turns and goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't think we need to go into his background. I mean, he's in over 200 things, and everybody knows who Ernest he's Borgnine is. He's Ernest fucking Borgnine. He's Mermaid Man from SpongeBob. Yeah, he's that's Mermaid Man he's from most SpongeBob. For. That's what he's most known for from our generation. Uh, so the, the other person in this movie, uh, this is really embarrassing as well, is uh, Stuart Whitman, who plays Joe Frank, uh, who I wrote down as tracksuit. That's his name in, in my notes because he just wears a tracksuit and he's a uh, Jersey-style mob boss living in Miami. <laughs> Uh, I only mention because he's in 188 things on IMDb, Holy including the shit. Comancheros with John Wayne, uh, and he was nominated for an Oscar for best, for this movie for best leading role in The Mark in 1961. So he's a very accomplished actor. Wow! Uh, and he's in this movie. Uh, Charles Pitt, who plays a. Uh, now, they wrote down on IMDb that his name was Fairy Spencer, but it sounds like everybody calls him Perry. Perry Spencer. Perry Spencer. Or Mr. Spencer for most of the yeah. time. Uh, only seven credits. 1979, he was in a movie called King Frat. I know that movie well. It's about oh, a... Oh, uh, boy. Uh, not very well, but I've seen mm. that movie. Can I read you the description and then you tell me if this is accurate? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay. This is the description from IMDb. Frat boys or is it fart boys? Question mark. Compete in a farting contest. That's yep. it. No, that is it. Uh, to make some money. It, it's very similar to uh, uh, you know our previous Grand Bean episode, Muggsy's Girls. Only <laughs> instead of mud wrestling, they're in a fart competition. And there's apparently a fart meter and all sorts of stuff. All that stuff, man. Uh, is this worth a bin worthy? Or? Oh, we're watching this. Oh, okay, great. Oh, this, cool. this will be all a 2018 right. bin. No, don't you wow. worry about it, fellas. So, grind bin all star Charles Pitt. Yeah, <laughs> is, it needs to be seen. There is a there is an attempted blumpkin. There's 
I'd hate to know what an attempted one is. <laughs> it's one that you don't want to receive. <laughs> oh, he's going to be a three-time. Yeah, it's uh, the great Blumpkin, Charlie Brown. Yeah, that's right. He's going to be a three-time Grindman All-Star because, uh-oh, same year, 1979, Skate Town, USA. Oh, man. Which he was ah. in, which I recently bought a copy of at a convention that uh, is definitely legal. So, <laughs> it's over 18. <laughs> I mean, I got sold it at a convention, so how could it not be, right? Man, we're going to receive a call from Mr. Crown and Mike. <laughs> 1984, he was in Monaco Fever, which is a movie with uh, John claude Van Damme that I've never fucking heard of. So, uh, And this uh, was the last thing he ever did. So, again, what another wow. one. Why is it that most of the movies we cover, it's like this is the last thing most people ever did? Because it's it goes either way. It's either the first thing they ever did or the last yeah, thing. We cover a lot of coffin nails on this show. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say the first thing you ever did because, uh-oh, our uh, female lead in the movie. Allison or Kim? Uh, Allison. Jin- <laughs> Very funny. Uh, Janine Lindemulder. How, how do you I think it's Lindemulder? Lindemulder. Or is in this movie she's just Janine Linda. Linde. Probably Lind. Lind. Like Paul Lind. It's like a, it's like like a the Lind drill A. You know what I mean? It's got the E at the end. Uh, like the El Torito Grill yeah. <laughs> The El Torito Grill The Janine Linde. It's uh, a Lind, Lind truffle. <laughs> yeah. Never, That's yeah. Lind. Yeah. There's a T at the end. Oh, is it? Look like yeah. a D. There's a D followed by a T. Way to, give you the D. Way to fucking derail this podcast, you. <laughs> Uh, this was her first role ever, Hughes, uh, and she's probably most well recognized by her picture on the cover of Blink 182's uh, "Enema of the State" album. Yeah, oh, she yeah. is the nurse on the cover. That's right. She looks yeah. a little different then. She got in some legal trouble down the line. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, she didn't pay her taxes or something. Oh. Yeah, she's, uh, you know, not I, Brian Bond's always doing better than her. Put it put this way, oh, but uh, really, well, yeah. she's uh, she's still around. She oh yeah, she's alive. Yeah, yeah, but, she uh, is uh, exclusively in pornography. Well, yeah. she is. At uh, this point my understanding time. is she's retired from that industry now. Oh, yeah. Okay, she was very uh, prolific in the late nineties, I believe, right. early thousands. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah the only credit that it has is her big big starring role was in the big budget porno that they made the pirates porno apparently she appears in that yeah, she, she does yeah. Yeah, she, and then she stood too close to a space hitter and melted <laughs> oh yeah she, she went to jail in 2008 yeah oh wow Good is times. she out or i don't know if she's out yet but she owed three hundred thousand in back taxes yeah. oh wow. boy she and wesley wow just and she just didn't pay it back it was like well i'll take the jail <laughs> jesus I'll take the jail <laughs> yikes uh and then linda blair's in this movie so we got that what Dude, are you doing here? She covered herself in tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. She's got like a blue That's kinda, butterfly yeah, She's kind of known for that. She's full, well, all yeah. sleeved out and everything. She yeah. also makes an appearance in, uh, I believe it's Brett Michaels' sex tape. Oh, boy. She, she was one of those around the same time that Tommy <laughs> Lee and Pamela Anderson were, hmm. were on a boat. Huh. So she made a career out of it. So Hey, you know, you get good at something. So, guys, we don't have any background, but I'm going to go into one review I found. There's, there's only two, like three reviews on IMDb for this movie. Uh, oh, one of them... Oh, oh no, it's, it's... Man, we, he, you know, Hughes, Hughes was so excited. It's not a sick critic. Damn uh, uh, We see... Okay. This is an IMDb review, one out of ten. See Ernest Borgnine sink to new depths is the name of the review. <laughs> That should have been on the poster. Uh, this is by Tom P. from A Remote Cabin in the Wilderness. This is where he wrote his location. <laughs> this was written in 2001. What a shame to see the star of Marty and the Wild Bunch, the great Ernest Borgnine, forced to accept roles in such pedestrian films during the later stages of his often brilliant career. The only thing noteworthy about this waste of celluloid is that it co-stars Janine Lindemulder. Credit is Janine Linda. <laughs> who went on to become a porn star when her mainstream career obviously didn't pan out. Watch this film to find out why. Huh. Hmm. So that's it. That's all the background I got on this movie. So Perfect. Guys, now we get into it. Man, you're going to start us. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. We start <clears throat> with a close-up of uh, Linda's perm. <laughs> <laughs> well, how did, uh, how did um, uh, <laughs> the other moving targets start? Start out with Jason Bateman playing keyboard. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Not bad. Yeah. So Bateman plays the keyboard, guys. Or yeah. something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, this movie starts with helicopter shots of Miami 
uh, some amazing music. One by more the way. try, I think, is the oh, name of it. Oh wow! Not the first grime band movie to start with helicopter shots of Miami with some no. amazing music over it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is a real. Uh, we need a little Black Inferno. We need some Oliver Onions <laughs> on this. Uh, this is a great song. I was like, yeah, except that it went on for three minutes. They do, three <laughs> minutes. They do intro. a verse fake out where you think the song is over, and then verse <laughs> four comes on. <laughs> like, if you ever, uh, you know, that Elvis song that like caught in a trap song. Yeah. And like it fades Suspicious out, minds. and then it just comes back in. You That's know? the best part of that. Song. <laughs> I know, but it mm. reminded me of this. It's just like you think it's uh, you nope, just, we're back. Just a coked out Elvis. Like, oh, you thought we were done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know you're in big trouble uh, when the director and the writer of this movie also credits himself with the story in the <sighs> credits. Where I'm like, okay, guy, we get it. Like, we don't need this. Is your baby? Oh yeah. Okay. All on different credits, by the way, not just one <laughs> oh, screen. Yeah, yeah. It's like a Chester Novell Turner oh, where great. he just doesn't does every one of them. Uh, at one point we see, okay, did you notice this? So they're flying through the buildings and everything. And at one point it, you can actually see the helicopter reflection. I don't think I caught that. Oh yeah. It's, it's in the building. You can see the helicopter in the camera. And I go, this is what you're supposed to cut out of <laughs> the movie when the, you get that footage. Not a usable shot is what you're saying? Not at all. But they were like, no, I really like that shot of all the buildings and when we flew through. And I don't, nobody's going to know if you can see the helicopter. Nobody's going to see that. So just fucking put it in there. They had needed three minutes of helicopter footage for the credits. Oh, yeah. They only had two minutes and 30 seconds. Let me tell you, they used every fucking second of helicopter footage they got because that was the most expensive thing in this movie. And they, you'll be damned if they were going to fucking waste that. Makes sense. I'd have done the same. And you know what? Spielberg did that with Jurassic Park. There's <laughs> reflections and shit in that movie, and you know what? He left it in. <laughs> so you're with it. Yeah. I'm absolutely yeah, with fucking it. Fucking throw it in, right? Uh, so you're supposed to cut that shit out, is what I wrote. You really think Sick Critic cares? <laughs> 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 you know, he didn't review this movie, and I'd like to think he's seen it, so I wonder where he was. Uh, this goes on for three minutes. Three fucking minutes, these credits last. So we hear the whole song, a lot of shaky footage, and we're just like kind of following around a motorcycle guy. And I'm wondering if this biker knows that he's in a movie. Yeah, you wonder that because it's like, did they just find a guy and they they're like, we're going to film him. Out. He looks great. Film that guy. Follow him. But didn't we get like POV uh, from the motorcyclist, like with the, the camera on the front of them pointing forward? So yeah, at some point, yeah, yeah. He's chasing a trailer. You think it's like freaking the, uh, Ray Liotta and the other Goodfellas? Like, he's just like <laughs> looking up like, what the fuck, this thing keeps following me everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like the, the police movie with uh, Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> There's a lot of police Naked Gun? With them. Yeah. Naked Gun. Yeah. You know, one of those police movies. <laughs> <with> Leslie- <laughs> He's done three naked guns. What else is I, I remember him in The Departed, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a good one. <laughs> okay, so we got. Oh, that would have made that movie so much better. We go to like a house on the beach, right? It was, we just see the outside of a condo or something on the beach. What color is the condo? Uh, white. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, you're, what? You're quizzing me now? Like, no, I, I was curious. <laughs> He's trying house, to visualize this film. Because okay, the house in this one was blue. You're, oh, okay. Well, you're going to love this, Chris. You hear the voices of a man and a woman inside, a little mm-hmm. VO, and yeah. you hear something about the girl going, I'm tired. <laughs> and he goes, you're tired. I'm the one doing all the work. And then they do a little... <laughs> Is it uh, their anniversary? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> kind of. Uh, so they cut, we cut back to the motorcycle, but then we go back into the house, and the guy chases this naked girl around with a camera trying to take pictures of her. A Polaroid camera. Uh, yeah, and I was like, this is definitely the director's <laughs> daily life. Like, this is just him being like, yep, every day. Yeah, it's very memento. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, no, no. And he's like, <laughs> like getting in there, you know. <laughs> she doesn't have any clothes on. Yeah, that's her, oh. her outfit. Actually, her wardrobe was only yeah. two shirts. Like, well, a, a skin-tight <laughs> dress and a shirt, yeah. and that was it. Uh, that the Miami Heat thankfully <laughs> donated to this production. <laughs> Do you think at some point that Miami Heat saw this movie and were like, why is our logo in this fucking movie? Like, the NBA being like, no, 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 no. We did not approve of that. Like, too late. (laughs) This movie's like Pretty Woman, but in Miami. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. just like Pretty Woman, you know? Uh, (laughs) Except this one has test results, you know? Oh, that's right. (laughs) (laughs) So this naked girl, she likes this guy's necklace. Uh, that he's wearing so he's like there's this real I don't, how do you explain this guy he's like he's smuggling grapes for sure this guy he looks like Jay Leno in a sparkly banana hammock <laughs> 
So he's like a Jersey mook <laughs> in like a banana hammock huh. with like a big old uh, necklace around his neck. Uh-huh. And she's like, I want it. And he's like, oh, not this necklace. This is too good. And she's like, well, I'll train you. And she like. Your garter. I think puts a garter on him on his leg. And I was like, are we at like a wedding or something? Like, what the fuck? It's some real huh. half-ass kink, man. And then she's like, all right, fair train. I get the necklace or something. And then she puts it on and runs away into the bedroom. And I then thought they, she ran away. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, bye. <laughs> like Scorchy, she just ran out into the water. Yeah. <laughs> and so she gets the necklace. They run in the bedroom, a little more fooling around in there, you know. Uh, and then we see motorcycle guys like sneaking around the, the backyard of this condo. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, I'm going to get in here. Uh, then we go to... Heard no, about that okay. banana hammock. Now He's this is where this is where it gets really weird. Is the speedo guy? Oh, by the way, we forgot one of the best lines in the movie, which I'm gonna play here, which is when she's kissing on him, and he goes, Hoo. like he does the weirdest <laughs> sound, really, I've ever heard a man make. <laughs> <laughs> Their dynamic is really weird too, because I. Th- when he's taking all these Polaroids and it kept on doing it, uh-huh. it was like seriously before he peels her skin off. Polaroids. Like, it got super <laughs> creepy. Huh. Yeah. Or like a Terry Richardson photo shoot. Like a lot, <laughs> lot like an American Apparel ad, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they get, she, uh, they're in... The Speedo guy is now... Did you notice this? He's taking Polaroids of her, but now he's speaking in like a foreign language. Yeah. I was like, wait a second. He spoke English a minute ago. Now all of a sudden he's like straight up speaking Italian. Does he look Italian? I think he's Italian, but he, all of a sudden it's like, did they forget to Italian, do the though. ADR in this part? Huh. Or I he was summoning know. a demon. This is where he starts doing the lap. <laughs> <laughs> Got her on the water bed. He's ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so he walks into the living room and then motorcycle man just shoots him right in the head. No blood. He just has a little, little dot on his head and then takes a really Amen. really long time to die that death scene <laughs> is a sight to behold it's like imagine a rag doll falling in slow motion <laughs> and he just goes <laughs> and it's like a good minute before Wait, he hits you the just ground. did a great like slow motion matt latonzi impersonation just now <laughs> <laughs> yeah he just falls to the ground really slow and then motorcycle guy walks in the bedroom and the naked girl's gone and he's searching all around the room and then he picks up a picture of the speedo mook wearing the necklace and then he, no face pictures of the girl it was just like no, the back no, of her no. head and i was like huh how shocking that that necklace is now an integral part of this movie <laughs> who would have thought that uh then the motorcycle guy takes the helmet off but you don't see who it is hmm. and makes a phone call but okay so it's like they, nightmare beach we're gonna keep this oh, a mystery okay. yeah, yeah. It, it's the mystery for the whole movie i don't uh, we have to spoil it at one point because i got questions but we'll get to we'll, that. we'll spoil it at the end we'll, yeah we'll ask your questions at the end um so she they take off the helmet. You notice the camera like followed the helmet and put yeah. it on. I think I thought somebody was under the bed, and then they were gonna find the person. <laughs> yeah, there. Bronson's under the bed, <laughs> and they totally just like hey, they, you're it too. <laughs> yeah, they follow the helmet. I got next. <laughs> they follow the helmet, put it down. You see, and then they cut to the phone, picks it up, and calls like a you, rotary phone, yeah, like an old style rotary. phone. And then you cut to like some like boat the one somewhere. Mr. Crown called us. On. Okay, we cut to a boat dock. And some dude in a tracksuit. So tracksuit. Yeah, fucking nice guy Eddie from Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, he's and so he's there with a woman in a bikini delivering him a phone. And apparently the necklace is important. He says there's a key. Uh, they need to find a girl and kill her. And he I just sets like, the whole movie up yeah, for us. Great. He's just going to lay it all out. Okay. He's uh, already seen this film. He's going to let us know yeah. what we're getting into. <laughs> he's like, look, guys, uh, yeah, I know you're not going to be paying attention much. There's probably some... Some points of the plot you're going to miss. So let me explain half the movie to you now so when you come back in, you can just go ahead and remember. Uh, We go to the house. The motorcycle hangs up the phone uh, and puts the helmet back on. Chases after the naked girl. She runs down the beach and into the road. Still topless this whole time. Running around a Miami beach topless. A frantic woman just going, ah! Nobody's... Nobody cares. Or as they say in Miami Beach, Tuesday. (laughs) And uh, she's picked up by the straight arrow's cousin. For real. Uh, like this van rolls up and you go, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. The only reason we know this isn't the straight arrow because there was already a girl in there willingly. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you don't know if she it's was true. willingly in there, you know, actually. You know in GTA when you can go get a paint job so the cops <laughs> stop looking for you? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just like, imagine the straight arrow, but with like a beach scene painted on it. No shit. Yeah. 
This is, this is the crooked arrow. Like, <laughs> as I would say, like the brothers from Surf 2 driving it. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like McDorfus and that other guy. Uh, uh, so the girl's screaming for them to drive off. Like, so she gets, so a frantic naked woman has mm-hmm. gotten into this straight arrow cousin. And she's like, drive off, drive off, drive off. And the guys are just like, hey, what's, what's going on, huh? What's <laughs> What? Hey, naked girl, why yeah. are you in my van? Hey, what whoa. did I do? <laughs> Jackpot, Thank Bobby, you. shut the door. <laughs> uh, so she's like, come on, let's go, let's go. And then a motorcycle guy, so he pulls up, and then he shoots mm-hmm. the back of the van, and they go, some, some guy is shooting at us. And then they just pull away slowly. <laughs> Pretty chill reaction for wow. that. Yeah, the exact line which I'll play is, gosh, someone's shooting at us. Keep calling. <laughs> Zoinks. Then we get a really bad van motorcycle chase. Like, they... Sh- there's a lot of car chases in this movie, and they shouldn't have tried. There's no good car chase in this movie, but a good third of the movie is car chases. Yeah, and it's it's like Mr. No Legs bad. Really? I was yeah. going to say, is it like just, are there even any shots from inside the car that these chases happening? Well, there's only one shot inside of a car, like point of view, right. uh, and it's in this van, and it shows you that the dashboard is covered in shag carpeting, which <laughs> I thought was a classy touch. Uh, so... Basically, the motorcycle guy keeps shooting at the van. Finally, somebody offers the naked girl a shirt. In the midst of this chase oh. scene, the other girl goes to the new naked girl. Hey, you want a shirt? Yeah, it takes the other girl in the van to be like, do you, do you want to cover okay. up a little? Not only does she say, <laughs> do you want a shirt? She says, here, you can wear one of my shirts. Mm-hmm. And it says Allison on it. It literally says Allison on the shirt. Yep. So we just can get this little plot point in just in case. wonder what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, By the way, uh, the, the motorcycle driver, driver, the motorcycle rider shooting at the van periodically takes both hands off the handlebars to fire the gun, but is still <laughs> oh, riding wow, the motorcycle. Oh, wow, that's talented. Well, I was impressed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there also is a great line that we'll play where the guys who are driving go, holy shit, Jesus. Like, they don't, they don't have much of a reaction at all. Man, they're just... <laughs> uh, holy shit, Jesus. Uh, so, okay, during this chase... The van runs into another car, okay, at basically a dead stop, Mm -hmm. which is what we see is a van going up to a car and literally stopping on the brakes, dead. And they've included all of that in the movie. And then all of a sudden you cut to a guy, like some random guy standing by a building going, whoa, as he watches (laughs) this van go flying and then it just lands correctly. Oh, wow. But I believe it's going to be flipped over. Yeah, I... because it, they, like they couldn't get the van to flip, and they're like, "Well, fuck, we only get one shot, so we really <laughs> fucked that up." Have to do some uh, theater of the mind with this one. Yeah, we better cut to random people going like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. Uh, and what we a show catastrophe. we show yeah. a woman going, "Oh!" Like <laughs> again, next to a building we'll never see, hmm. right outside the crown offices, just <laughs> <laughs> reacting. There's a lot of like parts in this movie Uh where they will have characters react to each other and talk to each other and they are clearly not in the same like zip code like especially the part where there's a girl on a beach and a guy at a house and they are miles from each other you might as well cut to a guy in a spaceship (laughs) (laughs) okay so uh the topless girl is like passed out in the sand right the bodies have been thrown from the vehicle in this horrific crash. But and they've been thrown all into the same side, so at least we can see them all. Right, right. And that, like, this was a little piece of misdirection. I didn't feel they would have... Uh, I, I was surprised. Like I was like, all right, well, hmm. little trick see, is yeah. they show the motorcycle guy like going up like he's going to go towards the topless girl, but then you see that it was a cop motorcycle. Mm. And like, so the cops are there and then all of a sudden there's an ambulance and then uh, Ernest Borgnine, as I just write Ernie in my notes, shows up. I, I was like, holy shit, it's Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's looking old and confused. He's wondering <laughs> So he's why. looking like Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he gets on the radio and he goes, we're going to need more body bags, which is a great line, he says. Uh, and then he looks, he says, Oh, dear God. Like he just read the script is what I write. <laughs> it's like he kind of just realizes immediately like, oh, no, mm-hmm. this is the movie I'm in. I'm I'm accidentally cast myself <laughs> in a Skidamax porno. I think he looked down at the call sheet and it said Linda Blair. <laughs> yeah. And he was yeah. like, oh, God. Oh, OK. This is going to be like an exorcist deal. Great. Uh, and then he finds out, no, there's a topless woman in the sand. And he's like, oh, no. Oh, fuck. Uh, so they, they roll the topless girl away, but it's great because they she's like... They wheel her away like a busted-ass shopping cart. Yeah. Okay. By the way, didn't she put on a shirt? 
But all of a sudden, now she's topless again. Well, the accent blew her shirt off. <laughs> That's never happened to you guys? But yeah, for all that they're paramedics, like, this, she is bouncing on this. Yeah, and Ernie goes, come on, boys, get a cover on this girl, will you? Like, <laughs> Uh, and then the police guy says, "I." so his partner goes, I think she's going to make it. And er- Ernie goes, any other survivors? And the police guy goes, maybe, but she's hurt real bad. And I was like, that's wonderful insight yeah. into the movie. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then all of a sudden a news crew comes up. And these are going to the be a main characters in oh, our movie. Oh, my God. And this lady, who's a reporter... I mean, are we going to have a Grind Bin Award for worst? Like, do we have like a Grind Bin Razzie? Finest actor that has ever <laughs> graced the bin. I mean, wow. Her name is Cody, right? I think so. Okay, but at some point, somebody's going to call her Billy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, they didn't have <laughs> names in this movie. Because there's Allison, there's Kim, there's Cody, there's yeah. Leah, yeah. there's... Everybody's got fucking three names. Little Billy. So happy birthday. <laughs> so Cody, the hard hitting Channel Eleven news reporter. Oh man, April O'Neil. Uh, so Channel Eleven must be like the public access over in Miami or something, I right? Have, I have in our notes a little later that I don't believe Channel Eleven has an actual news crew. There is no news channel. Like no man, that camera crew. is not running. No, no, <laughs> absolutely this is, not. This is this is an extra from up your alley who has uh, <laughs> found a beat up old camera at an alleyway. So can anybody explain to me, like, how this lady acts, looks? I mean, she is truly an enigma. She is a El Salvadorian house mom to a brothel. (laughs) Wow. Oh, okay. (laughs) Accurate. Uh, I can't explain. Like, you, I mean, this movie, by the way, incredibly hard to find, as man will tell you. Uh, You can only (laughs) order, like, a bootleg DVD of this thing. It's not available anywhere online or anything. She she just kind of like stares blankly at people, like kind of a little bit off of breaking the fourth wall. Like oh, she wow. wants to she's break it really never bad. Quite looking at the person she's talking to. But like the director's like, look, you can't look in the lens, okay? So can you at least look at my finger? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they've set somebody just off screen holding up the really? cue cards with what yeah. she needs to say. Oh, wow. Because she delivers every line like she's cold reading. Yeah. And really? her eyeline is yeah. very, very oh, wrong. That. It's like very someone wrong. trying to work with a CGI character oh, and wow. they don't know where to look. Because <laughs> they're like, do I look at the tennis ball or is the tennis ball the top of the head? Yeah. I don't yeah, I would not be surprised to learn she's blind. Like I really, I, mean, right. she, I don't know what she's looking Black at. Twist. Uh, and she also has the most monotone, horrible delivery to every line. Yeah, like I said, a cold read. Like in mm. high school, when they're like, "Do you mind reading the next chapter?" And really? the kid just sort of yeah. And she says every line like she's solving a wheel of fortune puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, Ernie, I'll take a vowel. And he's like, okay. And she goes, what caused the accident? Yeah, always shouting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and her, her, her makeup's painted on with rollers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like somebody took a paint roller. To she, paint. She's, a little, she's a little rugged to look at. <laughs> oh, my God. Did the movie make it was a <laughs> It was distracting because, like, everybody else in the movie, they kind of wanted somebody hot. And then they gave a main character. They went a different direction. Uh, is this, this must have been a favor or something. The producers decided to go a different direction. Is this direction. like the financier's wife or something? It's like she always wanted to act on a movie. Could you find a role for Maybe her? Maybe you're a star now. <laughs> okay, so she comes up to Ernie. She goes, Ernie, what caused the accident? Drugs? <laughs> and he goes he goes no 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 come on now it's not drugs it's not drugs he goes uh i believe this accident uh by the way why are the news people here why is there just only one news yeah. people there channel 11 never heard of you he goes uh no 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 it's a it's a traffic dispute or a case of mistaken identity mm. yeah. and i write what what the <laughs> fuck mistaken the identity. facts we have so far are that a van rolled over <laughs> that's it <laughs> At a high rate of speed. And yeah. Ernest Borgnine shows up and he goes, well, this must have been some sort of mistaken identity. Am I right? And his partner's just like, I think you should retire. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're about done. No, Somebody I love this the next part. I absolutely love the next part where... Well, take us to it, dude. They go right into an interview with Ernest Borgnine about his old partner and how he's just coming back to the force. Okay, okay. I got that written down. But we have to say that while... We, okay, so we don't watch that video of his interview at the crime scene, we're watching. So all of a sudden, we cut to a, a rich random, a, a random douchebag sitting on a couch, like 
spread eagle like you can almost see up those 80 shorts which are just like please cross your legs sir uh with a giant trophy in the foreground and you're like what the fuck am i watching hmm. and we see he's watching the tv and ernest borgnine inter- now all of a sudden the news is interviewing him about his old partner? his partner that just died and then like he had to watch him die so he was taking time off like they're really into this one detective story this that the news the, the is all about it Barbara Walters yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, and, yeah. and let me read you yeah. the quotes okay here you go this is the exact exact delivery uh captain wait one more thing please I know that there was some speculation that you might retire after your partner Frank Jeffries was shot and killed the night of the infamous Hialeah bus well Sergeant Jeffries was my best friend. Yes, I did consider retirement, but now that my head's clear, I'm ready to get back on the job again. Ernest Borgnine's about 80 years old <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> yeah, he is uh, way too old to be working on the police force. Like, him and Bronson would have made a great duo, oh, a little yeah, Kinjate duo, yeah, you it's know? It's like grumpy old men with guns. <laughs> grumpy old guns, I love it. Ooh. Grumpy old guns. <laughs> Nice. Coming soon from Grand Grump, Bin Pictures. Grumpy yeah. old guns, grumpy old badges, you know, anything. It, it works. Like, I, I can't wait. Of course, they're both dead, so oh, that's Brian's not going to happen. Borg nine together. Ooh. The BB crew. Uh-huh. It'll be the, the next Expendables. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I need that. I need, when they get, oh, I need to wait like a decade and then do Expendables where they're all way too old okay, to be doing yeah, this. Uh, oh, fuck yeah. I'm going to uh, pull out my inner Murray Langston. You can call it the Dependables. Get it? Depends. Guys, oh I'm leaving my show. God, I'm out of here. Get out of the house. <laughs> Bobby, start the van. <laughs> Done. Okay, so the phone rigs. Uh, okay, the phone rigs at this rich dude's house, and then he just turns on what is we're told is a Miami Dolphins game, and I'm like, hold on. Did they clear this footage, or are they just showing illegal NFL <laughs> footage on a... Like, we're, we're breaking all sorts of sports uh, trademarks on this episode. Like, oh, man. It goes to a Miami Dolphins game for no reason at all. And he's on the phone, and guess what? Linda's on the other end. Oh, wow. Enter Linda. And she's like, hey, uh, can you come down to the hospital? Could you tell that she was a doctor? Well, she's wearing a lab coat, so I assume... No, she was wearing a lab coat later. I think she was in her office during this call, and she looked like she was a lawyer. She didn't have anything on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I could see that, yeah. She's in, like, a, a office full of books and yeah. stuff. She's uh, like on a the set from How to Get Revenge. Yeah, and she she's goes, sitting there reading the Bible. Thought you like, make a phone call. <laughs> she goes, "You come down to the hospital," and he's like, "Yeah, I guess." I just like how they're introducing these characters as there's no introduction; they're just characters. No. And then we cut back to the Dolphins game, and and it's like he fumbled like a fucking moron. Laces uh, out. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so then we go to tracksuit uh he's i I read he's like playing go fish or something with his girlfriend (laughs) (laughs) and then he does some mob business stuff uh which is basically he's a man of mob business he calls a man wearing a yarmulke there are jewish andy rooney (laughs) you see in in my version there was a mob too oh Oh, really yeah there was (laughs) was it a guy also wearing a tracksuit wait was it a mob like the mafia or was it a mob like a group of people oh mafia Okay. But there are no tracksuits. Yeah, the angry mob chasing Jason <laughs> Bateman. Pitchforks. <laughs> so this guy's wearing a yarmulke. Uh, I didn't know that was yarmulke. It looked, I was it like, what big. the hell? Are we supposed to be saying something <laughs> about this? They're like, what's this tiny brimless hat? So this guy's wearing a yarmulke, and the tracksuit says he needs a favor, and then the guy just hangs up. In the middle of him saying, he's like, oh, no shit. I need a favor, and Click. then the guy just goes, <laughs> he, he doesn't even respond. He just blankly just <laughs> That's like back in, uh, in Human Tornado. He's like, the name of the guy is Dolomite. He hangs up the phone on him. <laughs> he's like, nope. So he just hangs up the phone, then he picks up the phone again, and then he calls somebody, and he says, when somebody gets gets here bring them bring them to me that's carlos I think. okay now we're gonna find out that that call didn't need to be made no most of these calls <laughs> like, don't need to be made like, i'm done with phone calls already at this point <laughs> like everyone needs to stop calling each other it's oh. almost as annoying as that hell squad phone yeah <laughs> you know there's another hell squad reference in this movie oh really yeah i can't wait to get to it so we go to uh the hospital and linda and the as i right now the dolphins fan uh, is visiting topless girl in her hotel room and uh, her, her hospital room, and I can't even begin to explain how poorly this scene is executed. Is Linda and this guy now? There's no words spoken. Okay, it's just them walking down a hallway and like sad music plays, and then they walk into this room with the topless girl laying in a hospital bed, 
and they both just stand there for a second. And then as, as I write, Linda leaves to go to craft services before Ernie hits it. Because mm-hmm. she just kind of like exits like slowly <laughs> out of the scene. The line was ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the other guy just exits slowly out of the scene. And we're just left here at a hospital room. And nobody said anything. And we don't know. Like, does anybody know each other? Like, <laughs> wh- I'm sorry. What happened? I so at, in my mind at this point in the movie I'm like, oh this is maybe like a missing girl or a lost girl to this guy. It's his daughter or something yeah. like that. But there's nothing to tell you that or there's anything. No reaction or anything. They just like look blankly at it. everybody. Just looks blankly and they then do walks out. A great out. job of creating the experience for the oh. viewer that you were suddenly left alone in a hospital room with a person you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, should I leave? Yeah. yeah okay. I, she wakes up. That's why I wait, feel wait, right technically, now. by this point in the movie, we're <laughs> we're 15 minutes in this movie yeah. plus. Do we know anybody's name? No, no, you don't. You literally know nobody. There is well, not a, there is a name on a shirt. We got that much. Yeah, but she, that shirt blew off in the crash. <laughs> so, okay, she <laughs> she wakes up, and then the guy leaves. So like Linda leaves, then the girl in the bed wakes up, looks at the guy. He just walks out, and then every she's left there as confused as the audience. Like I don't know what that was about either. <laughs> Moving target. <laughs> This thing's action packed. Oh yeah. And then the music stops and then the nurse comes in the room and we watch her give the the girl a drink. This is longer than the fucking scene with Linda. But this is also awkward cuz I'm like this person is being hunted right now and killed and she'd be killed at any moment. So here's the uh, four characters now that have walked in on this that I have no idea if they're trying to kill her or not and literally the person walks in gives her a drink and ends the scene yeah and I'm, really? we're so glad that she, we didn't get the full part where she goes well I need the bedpan ma'am <laughs> <laughs> that'll be on the blu-ray <laughs> Uh, so then, yeah, I write, we cut, and I write in all capital letters, what the hell was the point of this? <laughs> this was it. like three minutes of a movie. So then a car pulls up outside an office. It's nighttime now, by the way, if you notice. If you notice, uh, yes, it, it is. Was not nighttime earlier. Uh, Don't worry, because <laughs> it'll go back to daytime within yeah. three minutes. Uh, a lady walks inside of an office, and she's here to visit Yamaka guy, and we learn that this is channel 11 which is literally an office like this is like a taekwondo dojo in a strip mall yeah like that's what the office front mm-hmm. looks like oh like, shit and apparently her sensei. this is a a news station yeah and i don't see any antennas that are broadcasting anything right. or yeah. any sort of anything and when that guy said hey when so-and-so gets in there send him in the yamaka guy sits in the front of the office and the secretary person is literally a foot away from him. So when he oh, hung wow. up and recalled the secretary, can you imagine how annoying it must be to work there? It's like, <laughs> you can just tell me I'm right here. Yeah. Pick up the phone. Do you hear that? You hear that? Yes. And then the whole thing. Do your up. job. <laughs> <laughs> You're here to answer phones. Uh, so, the, okay. The reporter walks in. And she's like, hey, you wanted to see me? And he goes, yeah, I want you to new- use this new camera guy. And she's like, but I always use my one camera guy. And he goes, well, not anymore. You're going to use this guy. And he's like, is I right? Like the butler for tracksuit. Like he was just like like the guy who handed him a phone earlier. Yeah, that's a, a th- they don't tell his name for another 30 minutes, but his name's Chico. Yeah, it's like they tell everybody's name. I mean, spoilers, they tell everybody's name like right before they die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's how you can mark when someone's about to die. Yeah. You learn like, their oh, name. no, don't say my name. So we go back to the hospital, uh, and Linda shows the Dolphins fan uh, some of his publicity photos when he played tennis. So we learn he's a tennis pro. Hmm. She's like, remember this picture? And he's like, oh, yeah, that was me as a young man. And then he turns it over, and it's, like, signed. It's signed it, by him to a woman. To his daughter, right? Something or like yeah, that, right? I think it was to his daughter. Yeah. And, and she was like, do you know you know why she would have this? And he's like, no, my daughter died in Monte Carlo. And she's like, but do you have any proof? I'm like, what? The, what the, it's a what? shitty thing to say to someone. What? She goes, do you have any proof she's dead? And I just write, what the fuck's going on? Yeah, yeah. I got her corpse right here. Like, hold on. <laughs> Nobody's explaining anything to me. Okay. Here's a femur. If, <laughs> yeah, if run they're the trying, like, at this point now, I'm like, if they're trying to tie this girl that we're looking at, topless girl, to him... She ran out of a condo naked yeah. 
into a stranger's van. Where the fuck did this picture come from if it's from her? I don't know. Well, she was, I, mean, I don't picture, know. The picture she was has in no the clothes. Van. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, there's no... No, no. Hold up, Bobby. There's a point later in this movie where she says that the picture is hers. Yeah. Okay. I'm so was she hiding it up her ass? <laughs> Probably. No, I'm just asking you that seriously because she has no... Like, literally, this girl has bikini bottoms yeah. and nothing else. And she ran into a van, and I didn't see her carry the picture, so I don't know where this came from. And and the other and by girl, the way, it's a full eight by ten photo. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's a big picture. Nice eight by ten. Oh glasses. my god! Yeah, and Bobby, if you're thinking that the other girl that was in the van may have been the daughter, well, no, her no. parents come in. <laughs> no, she's Shit. not the daughter That's at right. all. So, this movie's a bit confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so where did this picture come from? Literally. Thin air. Literally nothing. nothing. Linda pulled it out of her purse. Like, maybe if there was something with Linda later on, you know, like a little twit. No, oh. no, no, there's not. But no. we have been giving, like, the second character name, mm-hmm. Allison. Yeah. So, so we, we know Topless the, Girl is now Allison. For we the know the detective, the and we know Allison. Okay. So, hmm. we go to... Okay, so basically the theory is, is that somehow this girl who, who smuggled a glossy 8x10 up her ass that was signed by this guy is somehow the daughter of the tennis guy. Okay? Wow. Of the tennis guy. Yeah. 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 Mr. We're gonna run so yeah. we're going to call him for the rest of the movie, Daddy. Okay. Now you're going to see how disturbing that will become. I am not okay with this. <laughs> I am uh, absolutely we're, okay with we this. We are calling him Daddy. We had to watch this. <laughs> we are calling her Allison. Uh, so... <laughs> Strap in, no, man. No, no, nobody's <laughs> seen this on. movie. Bobby's very, very <laughs> upset about this. He brought this movie to the bed. So. Yeah, it's my fault. Uh, this is this, uh, a trip at trip up? <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so man down. We go outside the hospital. <laughs> That's what we'll call it when you didn't watch the right movie. <laughs> man down. Man down. <laughs> so we go outside the hospital, and the news lady's there again with her mm. new cameraman, mm. and it's the daytime, and they're just... <laughs> I mean, apparently they were there all night. Yeah. Uh, so she's out there and she runs up and she goes, well, no, she doesn't run up. She's just giving a report in front of an empty door, like a shut door. And she goes, Henry Spencer, world famous tennis champion, is about to leave the hospital. Then he walks out and she and she like gets in his face and delivers these lines. I mean, I'm going to play some of them. They're just... She talks like she can't control the noises coming out of her face. <laughs> yeah. And with a look on her face like, it's happening again. Oh, God. <laughs> How does she know that they suspect that that's his daughter at that point? They, she doesn't. But we'll soon find out if she goes to the front desk of the hospital, they'll tell her all sorts of information. But the they same, won't tell the, her as much as now. the police. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, more so. More. Uh, so she goes like, hey, was that your daughter in an accident? And his response is, hey, Spencer's a common name. And he goes, isn't your name Cody? And she goes, yes, yes, it is. And he goes, it's, isn't that Buffalo Bill's name? Are you related to Buffalo Bill? The fuck? And, yeah. Yeah, and you're just like, huh? And she says, <laughs> touche. And then he right. walks away, and the news lady says, I smell a scoop. <laughs> okay. Like his fourth wall sense. breakage, right. I smell it's, a scoop. By the way, she was delivering this like it was a live broadcast. Did all of that go out on the air? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Even her going, I think I smell a scoop. So the, the <laughs> what do you guys think back home? <laughs> so the back- old Bugs Bunny mug to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so back in the hospital room, uh, the young girl's awake and Linda comes in and we, we find out that she has amnesia, but not really because she doesn't have amnesia at all, actually. No, she's, no, just- she's trying to figure out who to pretend to be. <laughs> yeah. She just keeps saying the name Allison Spencer. Like, I could live in that skin for a week, you know? <laughs> but it sounded more like Allison Spencer, I married the Spencer. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, Maybe like, like, oh, I miss... You're like a girl, like, oh, my- Jonathan Taylor Thomas, and then my name's Wendy Thomas. Oh, that's <laughs> not going to go well for Wendy. <laughs> yeah. So she asked, uh, she's like, hey, uh, what about that tennis guy that came in to visit me? And Linda sighs. Like she sighs as in <sighs> like she can't believe she's in this movie. Yeah, she gets she's like, Ugh. and then gives his entire life story, and I mean his full <laughs> life story for like he grew up and so and so, you know, that he graduated kindergarten and then. I love backstory of a character that's not in the scene. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's <laughs> like okay. it's like he died in Invasion of the Bee Girls. We're gonna give him the whole <laughs> yeah, the whole backstory. Whole backstory You're yeah. gonna everything you need to know about this guy. Uh, listen, we're to the full <laughs> newspaper eulogy. <laughs> And she's like, she, she had, he also had a daughter uh, that they think might be you, uh, but she died in a boating accident. And then Linda just walks out of the movie. <laughs> you may have died in a boating accident. Yeah. And the girl's like, huh. 
And then the news reporter walks into the room. Okay, so now she's in the hospital room, and she's carrying, like, what you would bring to a funeral. Oh, giant, <laughs> giant flowers. Yeah. Really? And, like an Italian funeral. Yeah. Okay, here's the yeah. thing. Some Allison... Bread. <laughs> it's Easter. <laughs> Allison covers her face and goes, "No, I don't want him in here." To the camera guy. The camera guy. Yeah. And I was like, "Is this a like okay?" I was like, "Is this a racist thing or like a media thing?" Because then all of a sudden she talks just fine to the news lady. Mm -hmm. She's like, "Okay, now that he's gone." And the thing is that I can only piece together from watching the entire movie is at the end when they when she meets the boss. They know each other. They're like very what? familiar with each other. Yeah. So he, she must have known. She must have known the him. whole time. The whole time. Yeah. And she which makes herself even less sense right because now. right now they don't know which which girl the the motorcycles was after. I feel like we're yeah. watching a sequel to a movie that doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a whole other hour and a half that we should have already seen to understand. It's called all this. B roll with ADR. We're watching the B roll of <laughs> yeah. the first movie. The leftovers of another movie. Like that's basically what it is. And so by she, way, during this scene, there's a very visible uh, shadow cast by a crew member. <laughs> <laughs> like it just, that's the first thing that enters the room. You know, maybe like, it was the motorcycle guy. You don't know. Oh. You don't know. Uh, so the guy leaves, the camera guy leaves, and then Allison goes, oh, those are beautiful. Um, who are you? <laughs> oh, I'm a reporter. Blah, she blah, goes, blah. I'm Cody, a reporter at Channel 11 News. Uh, and then she gives more of Dennis Guy's backstory. So, like, what Linda didn't fill in, she fills in the rest. Yeah, the big <laughs> part is, is about the wife dying and being left all that money. So he Yeah, so he was a tennis bro pro. Tennis bro pro. Bro pro. Uh, and his... <laughs> the GoPro. <laughs> and his wife was rich, and then she died and left him money? Yeah, she choked on some froyo and so died. So he wasn't, like, a real successful tennis player, apparently. No. He was a, you know... A little first round exit over. Well, as, as we learned about his character, he may have been a tennis instructor. <laughs> yeah. So somehow he has all this money, and she's like, "Ooh, he -he. she's like scorchy. <laughs> she smells it. She's like, hatch, hatch. <laughs> <laughs> "Gotta get my fingers in there." So Ernie arrives at the front desk. Okay, so Ernest Borgnine comes back in the movie, and he goes, "Hey, can I see uh, that Allison lady?" And the the lady at the front says. Uh, no, you need to approve it with um, the, this doctor. Linda. Yeah, with Linda. And I write, what? And then like, He's the fucking cops. He can go see any patient he wants. Yeah. Like, he doesn't need approval. But you then know he what? goes, tell it to that lady who got arrested. <laughs> 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 but then, like, this is weird because she just has, the lady at the desk only has a computer herself and talking to people. There's no phone calls being made or anything like that. And she goes, well, if they approve that with the doctor. Okay, where's the doctor? Ding, 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 ding. Uh, doctor's at the second floor nurse station. Go find her. You're like, yeah. <laughs> How the fuck do you know that? Like, does the doctor just sit there all day? I don't know. Why Hughes, would a doctor sit in a nurse the, station? The next thing is also the idea that, like, hey, you can't you can't wander this hospital without authorization. Go find the doctor somewhere. Yeah. No. 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 Because then all of a sudden, <laughs> the news lady comes up to the front desk right after Ernest Borgnine, and she goes, "Hey, can you tell me all about that lady that was in the accident, that other one <laughs> in the ICU?" And she goes, "Yeah, sure. Let me pull it up for you right now." Oh, here's her name. Oh, oh yeah, she was. Uh, she's in a bunch of trouble. She got all hurt and everything. She's like, "Can I go visit her?" She goes, oh, "You know, visiting that right now." But but uh, later. Oh, but I think later. she's going to survive. Yeah, but she'll be great. She, she, she's going to make it. Okay. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, you gave her all the information. You turned her, you told Ernie, the cop, to go yeah. fuck himself. That's basically. right. Like, hey, it's not my job. Uh -huh. Fuck you. Go find Linda. <laughs> go bother her, you know? Uh, so then Ernie talks to Linda. Sarah and mutter, fuck the police. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this was, this was the thing. Ernie goes and talks to Linda Blair, and this was just like, they needed an excuse to have both of them in the same scene because they were on set for the same day. Yeah. Oh. And they're like, we got to get them, the duo, so we can get it on the trailer pictures in the box, the VHS mm -hmm. box where, yeah. where Ernie goes up and he shakes Linda's <laughs> hand. And they're good. Where this movie didn't even end up on. Yeah. Because Linda, okay, so he goes up to the desk like he knows Linda. He goes like, oh, hey. And she's like, oh, it's so good to see you again. And it's like, again, a sequel that... To a movie that was never made, we're like, yeah, you need to I'm pick sorry, up the, uh, the three issue comic book <laughs> miniseries to understand. Uh, so she, okay, <laughs> Ernie talks to Linda, and then she, he's like, hey, I need to see that girl, Allison, and uh, I need to ask her about the bullet holes they found in the van, and if someone shot at them. You oh, found no, oh, no, bullet hold, holes. Hold, I'm sorry. She takes Ernie to go see Linda. Then they go into the hospital room. He looks at Allison and he goes, hey, somebody shot bullet holes in that van. You know anything about that? And she goes, no, cut. <laughs> to the point. Yeah. I'm going to waste any time. Cool. 
It's like he's like this ain't while digital she's cameras her, here, man. We gotta <laughs> while she's eating her Jello, and he's just like, you know anything about that? Nope. No. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, and well. then she mutters, "Fuck the police." <laughs> <laughs> then we go to a night in the hospital room, and like a girl in the ICU. So the other girl that would never know who she is, real Allison, real Allison, sleeping. And then mm-hmm. motorcycle guy comes to the room. He's searching drawers and stuff for necklace. She wakes up. So the girl wakes up. She clicks the the nurse call oh, button. Yeah. And then the motorcycle guy, as they say, at some point rips a tube out of her arm and Did blood see, goes and everywhere. Blood, like there's actual yeah, blood what effects. What the hell kind of the IV fuck? is that? Yeah. If she's geysering <laughs> blood when you remove it, <laughs> I know. I was like, somebody fucked up, man. Yeah. But like, why would you aggressively kill somebody like this in an ICU where you can just? There's so many things you can do. They inject the air them too. Yeah. Yeah. Inject yeah, air yeah. And they're done. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But no, he's gonna then climb takes, on top of the takes bed, takes the pillow, and puts it over her face and everything. By the way, the nurse alarm is going off. How long does it take somebody to find this dead body? I would say conservatively a week. Yes. <laughs> Look, man, you saw the front desk. <laughs> like that alarm just going that, off. That shit like, checks out. Hey, somebody got that? Somebody get that one? Well, it's also no. it's also a movie rule. You see this all the time, even most recently in Happy Death Day. Uh, no hospital has any staff after dark. Yeah, they're just, you oh, know, yeah. they're no just one bare. works there anymore. Yeah, it's just home. a ghost town full of patients. It's like a prison, you know? At, yeah. at night, all the guards go home and, you know. Just leave you locked up till the sun yeah. comes back. You guys be good, okay? Yeah, there, is, there is no <laughs> night shift at the hospital in a movie. <laughs> all right, nobody die now, all yeah. right? We'll yeah. be back in the morning. We posted the phone number up by the, the front yeah. desk. Three one or 911, just in case anything goes wrong. Remember, okay. if anybody asks, we were here. <laughs> <laughs> so then we go to a tennis court, and Linda and Daddy are playing some tennis, okay? Uh, and then Ernie shows up, and he's like, Hey, uh, Mr. Daddy, I'd like to ask you a few questions. And he goes, he, like, fucking flips out. He goes, my daughter is dead. He's like, my daughter's fucking dead. I don't know what you're talking about. This fucking broad comes to the hospital. This is my daughter. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> He does. He flips yeah, he, out. You're he's like, not whoa, happy. whoa, what is going on? Uh, Attorney's and, eyebrows. He gets you nervous. <laughs> and, and then I write, uh, does anyone have a fucking picture like of the daughter, <laughs> like in the police database and like a, a yearbook? Well, I mean, any die in the U.S. They didn't live. But I mean, like they lived abroad. Somebody apparently. has a picture of her, right? He could be a look. That's not my daughter. You <laughs> see this picture? This doesn't look anything like her. Boy, that would have settled things pretty quickly in this movie. <laughs> He was like, trust me, I'd never fuck my own daughter. Trust me, okay? Oh, parents don't keep pictures of <laughs> Daddy kids. wouldn't do that. Yeah, daddy would never do that. Yes, again. <laughs> <laughs> so this all ends in nothing. Literally nothing. Because nope. Ernie, Ernie just leaves this. <laughs> turns around and leaves. There's a lot of people telling him, nope. Yeah, he goes, all right. Uh, so then we also don't mention anything about another girl being killed. I wrote, nobody noticed. Oh, weird. I mean, that literally happened... <laughs> at night it's now the next day no not no police haven't been notified or they just didn't get around to that one yet uh so then we go to the hospital and uh allison sneaks out of the hospital okay she somehow called somebody to come <laughs> with a scooter they called uh, uber scooter yeah, yeah like <laughs> a guy on a moped rides by right. and just hops on we don't know who that guy is <laughs> And the news ladies, it looks like she caught a moped. Yeah, like, as a news, like like a wild horse ran by, and she just <laughs> left. This happened to happen. Like he, so, like the guy on the moped doesn't know there's someone on the back of it right now. You would think that <laughs> she knew the guy because she runs out and runs directly to this moped, and then you'll never see that person mm-hmm. again. And the news lady was standing out there all night waiting for her to come out of the hospital or something, and she's like, "Oh, get her!" And then they run, and she gets on the moped, and the news lady just goes. Damn, and hits her knee. There's a fucking, <laughs> throws her cowboy hat on the ground. There's a fucking news van right next to them. And they just can't like, get in and go. Yeah, just drive. <laughs> They're like, damn, she got away. <laughs> All right. She could be anywhere. <laughs> so then Ernie and the cop, okay, so Ernie and his partner, they're finally where the dead girl is in the hospital, and they're just looking at a sheet, and then all of a sudden, no, I'm sorry. The, the cop calls Ernie in his car, and he's like, hey, you got to come down here. There's a dead girl. And Ernie's like, I'll be right there. Cut to a tennis club. Now, Daddy is trying to buy a Coke, uh, and it doesn't work. Because Linda shoves some cotton up the machine. <laughs> and he starts... <laughs> Grind bin. Um, he starts, like, kicking the machine, like karate kicking it. Yeah. He's losing his mind. He's and raging Linda, against Linda's it. Linda's laughing. She's like, hee hee. 
This guy has a fucking temper. Yeah. yeah. And nobody seems to care. Linda's delighted by it. Yeah, she loves him. She, in fact, she tries to deliver him some exposition, but then he goes, hey, you know what? Pause that. We'll wait for later in the movie. Why don't you come over tonight? You know? Hmm. We might uh, <laughs> discuss get, things later. Get Linda. in the jacuzzi. Yeah, we might get in the jacuzzi. <laughs> Uh, and she's like, all right, sounds fine. Uh, the way Linda says it, by the way, she's like, fine. Fine. <laughs> like, I got to show up again for this movie? Like, they tricked her, you know? Yeah. She's like, I'm going to get all my scenes done here, right? And the, and then the guy says, You know, she hasn't gotten her bag yet. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you come over tonight? And she goes, no, that's not in the script. <laughs> Why didn't you come over tonight? Uh, I'm sorry. Hello, director? Anybody? He's ad libbing. Really? He's ad libbing. <laughs> <laughs> He's making this shit up. He's gone rogue. <laughs> and they're like, she'll say fine eventually. <laughs> uh, so then, Ernie and the cop, they search the dead girl's room, and I write, what are they looking for? <laughs> because they don't know sure about be nice anything to know. missing or anything. And it's like a half ass search, and it is like open up three drawers. He goes, ah, get somebody else on this. Yeah, he looked at me. Yeah. Like, get somebody else. On wow. It. I was Super like, so cop. what? What are they looking for exactly? A clue? I don't know. Like, it's almost like the director said, just do cop stuff. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, right, by the way, he's uh, not wearing for things. He's not wearing any sort of gloves or anything. No. They're just putting fingerprints all really? over this. They're bitch. contaminating like they, the fuck out of this crowd. Some one guy's like smoking a cigarette, yeah. spinning a <laughs> gun around. Some guy's picking at the Jello tray that was yeah. not finished. Yeah. 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 Ernie picks up the cake. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's amazing more people don't die around here. <laughs> and so then Ernie runs out and he goes, yeah, get someone on this. Uh, tennis guy comes home and the news crew's waiting. Ugh, they're everywhere. And they just basically... There goes that news van okay, again. So the news van's here to just basically tell him what happened in the movie. Mm-hmm. So they're like, hey, tennis guy, just so you know, okay, uh, that girl died in the hospital, but then another girl broke out of the hospital. And he goes, oh, thanks for the update. Just... <laughs> Yeah. And I'll we, tune in later. Thank and you. And we see him being kind of a dick, but he's also driving like the evil version of O.J. Simpson's white Bronco. Oh, oh, really? Fuck this guy, by the way. There's a part where I lost it with him, and I was like, this is supposed to be our protagonist, by the way, and he is a deplorable human being. Uh, espe- L- like- Linda's the only good one in this movie. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's sad to say. And we're actually mentioning her more than she was ever in this movie. <laughs> We're yeah. making it sound like she's in more of this movie than she's she She's in is. a little bit more, and she has some great scenes. Uh, so we go to home. The tennis guy, so Daddy walks through the front door, right? And he finds Allison's there at his house playing darts in his home. and In the jersey. She's wearing a Miami Heat jersey with no bra. <laughs> uh, and she's throwing darts. And he walks up to her, and he goes, Hey, what are you doing in my house? She goes, You're much better looking than your photo. And I say, Um... The photo of you as a I'm child? Sorry. I'm sorry. No, she says that to him, and I go, um, isn't this supposed to be like your dad? It's supposed to be and what you are under the impression of? Yeah. <laughs> At least that's the story okay. she's going with. Chris, she's supposed to be his daughter. Now, she's in a Miami Heat jersey with no yeah. bra on. Uh, it's a loose-fitting jersey, by the way. Uh, and she's also with pigtails. <laughs> and I was like, ah, uh, okay. So no uh, perm, but are they perm pigtails? No, 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 no. She's in pigtails yeah. and a Miami Heat jersey, like daddy's little girl. Yeah. And it's very, very disturbing. I think all of us in our respective places that we watched this began looking around the room. <laughs> yeah, we're like, oh, I'm sorry, is this, is um, this, am I watching pornography? Does anyone see that I'm watching this right now? I don't. <laughs> and then she goes, she leaves the room for no reason. She walks out to the pool. Yeah. And this is where he follows her out to the pool. Because mm. he's there's, like, there's a strange woman in my there's house. There's a strange woman. But there's st- at, to the audience, this could be his daughter right yeah. now. Oh, wow. So she turns around and lifts up her jersey <laughs> and then nip slips yeah, both of them Yeah, she flashes the camera. Really? Yeah. And then, like, puts it back down? And or she, 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 yeah, she puts it back down. She's like, I'll give you your shirt later or something. And then she goes to him. She goes, can I have a Coke? And he, he's like, we only have diet or something. I'm like, we're a Pepsi what? house, bitch. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> In my house, we respect that, Pepsi. That would have been an amazing line. <laughs> <laughs> and then she just goes, oh, I'm sorry, wrong house. And then just <laughs> <laughs> movie ends. See the jersey flop on the ground as she walks out. Oh, she jumps on a moped. She, the- asked, she asked for a Coke and she gives, he gives him, gives her one. She's like, oh, you meant soda. <laughs> I would have liked the old, uh, is Pepsi okay? And she goes, no. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> so <laughs> she's, she's like disappointed that starts to take her top off. Yeah, I just write, what the, what the fuck is going on? But at this point, I think they're both like 
into each other. Like she oh, yeah. wants right. to fuck him because he's rich, and he wants to fuck her because she's hot. Okay, but at right. this point, they still think that they're. No, I don't Father think either of them thinks it. He I, doesn't think it. The movie just wants us to think well, it. Well, no, because yeah. then he starts to be like, wait, hold on a second. What if? Yeah, what if? What if? And what if she, this is my daughter who I previously thought was dead? Yeah. Like and the it, idea that this is my long lost daughter who yeah, died yeah, out, yeah, out of yeah. country. Because yeah. he all of a sudden, he's like, oh, maybe I'm wrong about this. Mm. And so then he gets her a soda. It's and an he, interesting. Weird. It's a psychological conundrum that we never wanted to watch somebody explore in a film. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Especially as we keep going. I don't need this at Yeah. So he gets her that soda. Uh, then she, he's like, do you still have amnesia? She's like, yeah, I think so. And then we watch her eat a banana and some meat. And by the way, she gets the meat from the fridge and like bends over in front of him and rubs her butt into his crotch. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, okay, that's... Uh, We're looking around the room again. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, uh, <laughs> uh, um, I was just looking for the banana already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So she was getting ready for her later career. Like, that's what it was seeming like. This was her demo reel. Yeah. (laughs) So then all of a sudden, Linda calls the house, and she goes, hey, you know those Maury test results you were waiting on? (laughs) Like, literally that fast, they're going to have a paternity test. And he goes, yeah. And she goes, well, good news. You're not the father. And And he goes... He's like relieved. He goes, "Oh, thank God! I was about to make a potentially serious mistake yeah. with my life." He's like, "Man, I am so glad because I was gonna go for it regardless." <laughs> yeah, he's like, "I mean, man, I, do I feel better I, now? I was gonna fuck this girl, so thank God the call came before instead of after." And Although it could have been a nice little Russian roulette, you know, we're playing. But at the same time, isn't Linda like saying, so I'm coming over tonight, right? She goes, yeah. Are you ready for me to come over later? And then he goes, oh, yeah, we're going to have to take a rain check. And she just looks furious. Well, she just got iced out. Ooh. She's like, what the fuck? Somebody's about to come pick me up to go over to your house and everything. Like, I, I told him I was going to have a ride home from work and all this stuff. And then so we get the whole like somebody's in the room on the mm-hmm. phone gag is like the daughter is like kind of prouncing around she's like can you talk can you talk can, you talk? can yeah. i rub you can yeah. i rub you out <laughs> you know we've all been there yeah she's saying that yeah. she's like so he's on the phone she's like let me rub you rub one out you know like, <laughs> like, <laughs> when we go to the bedroom rub you out and he's doing the all like cover the phone and he's like no uh, uh, uh and he's all confused and linda's oh, like we've what? all been there <laughs> Linda's like, what are, you, what are you doing? What are you, what are you talking to? <laughs> and he's like, oh, nothing. Uh, um, yeah, uh, come over later. Uh, it'll be fine. And then Allison's like, well, come up, this, come upstairs when you're done on the phone. And he's like, oh, okay. Uh, and I write, you know, I've learned, learned that it's not his daughter, but at the same time, I, I'm not sure I'm okay with all of this. Now I have a stranger in my house that just is like <laughs> trying to seduce yeah. me quickly. Yeah. Like, this doesn't seem suspect. <laughs> And so then we go to later. Uh, it's almost like they added in that that line of Linda going like, "Oh, it's not your daughter," because it was <laughs> the like, chest audiences were getting <laughs> up and drove. <laughs> Excuse me, like, what the fuck? I mean, I know it's. I understand, okay, but uh, the test audiences are telling me they're very uncomfortable with the fact that a man might be fucking his own daughter. Can yeah. you do something to fix that? So apparently, this uh, PC culture run amuck here uh, has a real problem with that conception. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know it was a problem. I mean, but because uh, ten years later was that other incest movie that came out? What one? Um, I don't really follow that genre. No, no, it was a, it was in, it, it got awards. It was a, 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 a son taking care of his mom after she broke both of her legs. Uh, no. Oh boy, that was a Woody Allen movie, right? No, yeah, right. I don't think so. Oh, Woody Allen making an incest movie—that's yeah. a shock. Yeah. Oh man. Okay, so yeah, we I got really a, don't know what movie you're talking about. Actually, it was only done uh, four years after this. It was called Spanking the Monkey. Oh, yeah, that's by David that. O. Russell, by the way, hmm. who uh, also was accused of uh, <laughs> sexually. Yeah, we can save a lot of time with who one wasn't. of his nieces. So, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's, it's all circumstance. <laughs> oh, hey, Woody, it's good to see you on the show. <laughs> we, got, we got another phone call coming in from the table. Good to see you on the bed. Yeah. <laughs> Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Basically, we see the motorcycle guy takes off from somewhere and it's night. Okay. Then we see uh, daddy walking into his fake daughter while she's in the bathtub with like a pile of clothes. He's like, Brett, your clothes. <laughs> uh, also, she didn't have fucking clothes. No. Where? Where did she get clothes? It's his daughter's clothes? No. no. Because later they have to go shopping. By the Christ. way, Bobby. Can you answer me a question? Probably not. Or Hughes? Definitely not, man. Uh, <laughs> ask me. I think man's going to field this one. Where the fuck was that necklace? While she was in the hospital and like in the crash and everything? Keistered. 
<laughs> it must right. be. She's keeping yeah. it in the compartment. There's only the, two uh, people that the motorcyclist <laughs> had to kill in the hospital. Yeah. He went into one. He didn't find it. Yeah. Why not go into the other one? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, two. obviously nobody cares at the hospital. Nobody came in and saw that dead girl till the next day. Or else, like, the janitor yeah. walked in. He's like, well, fuck this. It ain't my shift. I'm, this is I'm- uh, General Malay's hospital. <laughs> he's like, I ain't filling out, pup. Yeah. Basic medical basic care medical. hospital. <laughs> yeah. Basic medical. Yeah. yeah. I think we're back at basic medical. Okay. So the tennis. Okay. Daddy walks in on his fake daughter in the bath and brings her some clothes. I don't want that to be a line in this. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Bobby, you brought this movie. I know, I know. (laughs) And it's about a man wishing his own daughter was this girl. Like, I think it's important to point out, I had not watched this prior to bringing it in. Okay, I think it's important to point out that at one point in the movie, she says, I can change my name. And he goes, no, I like it the way it is. Yeah. (laughs) How did this not win any awards? (laughs) Yeah, I think Woody was a big fan of this one. Uh, so, okay, Daddy walks in and she's like, "Hey, why don't you uh, start this porno and wash my back?" And he goes, "Okay." And then at first he like touches her. And she goes, "Too hard." She's still sore from the crash. <laughs> yeah, and then she gentle. Start, he starts gentle. giving her a little, <laughs> give her a little gentle massage. Which, by the way, she hasn't had any marks on her this entire time. Like, no, she no, is no. on some unbreakable shit. And yeah. she survived this yeah. crash without so much as a scratch. And we can see everything if there was a scratch. Yeah, we'd know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because she's never clothed. Uh, so she's naked again, as usual. Uh, and then she's like, why don't you get in the tub? And then the door ri- doorbell rings, and he's like, uh, fuck. And she's like, she's like, well, uh, he, he goes, oh, it's my friends. I was expecting them. And she's like, well, get rid of them. He goes, yeah, I'll get rid of them. By the way, when you're done, meet me in the bedroom. So when you're done in this bath, just meet me in the bedroom. I'll be right in. Uh, then we cut to, so to speak. outside where the news crew is there. Okay, because they're always there. Yeah, uh, they have. I, There's at, a scoop. At some There's point, I'm like, excuse me, is there any other things like some sort of cat show or like another accident scene you could be at? Like <laughs> anything show. going on in Miami that might need to be reported on? <laughs> no, other you know, than Miami's this a pretty quiet town. Tennis daddy, There's not a lot going on. Trying Miami. to have sex with his daughter. Like, like Atlantis is rising down the street, <laughs> and she's not reporting <laughs> shit. So we we can see the news crew outside. We just got to remind everybody they're there, uh, and then we see Linda. The tennis guy and some friends just played pool. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'll be right there, and he's just going to hang out with his buddies yeah, for like, a while. Rack him up. He, he comes back later. He's like, I met in like three hours. So He's like, well, where's she going to go? <laughs> he's like, yeah, she'll figure it out. She's ready when I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so Allison that just stands out on a balcony, she's actually wearing some sort of shirt at this point, which is surprising. And then the camera guy, so the mob camera guy takes some sort of creep shots of her. He's like getting creepy footage of her which if she was afraid of him recognizing her he doesn't well she doesn't see yeah he doesn't recognize no. her and she doesn't know that he's taking footage uh but then we cut to linda and she grabs uh she grabs daddy by the ass uh and she says how about we jump in that jacuzzi and now chris you didn't you weren't here for uh, up your alley but they said the word jacuzzi in that movie about a billion times. And the guy kept, a, yeah, there's a guy in Up Your Alley who, in every scene, is trying to get Linda Blair to get into the jacuzzi with him. Really? So he can get it up her alley. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we have Linda Blair trying to get someone in the jacuzzi. By grabbing his alley. So See, it's it all, very, it all, it all ties together. Yeah, all full circle. Universe. This I think right. this is the same Fun Linda fact, Blair character. trying to get the artwork for that movie. I can't, it, a lot of different... The things came up when I you, typed up your alley. You went, uh, <laughs> you went down some alleys. I did go down some alleys. <laughs> okay, Linda grabs the, uh, his ass, and then she like gets him real close, and she says, why don't I give you one of my therapeutic massages? And he's just like, hey, I don't feel it. I don't feel like it. It doesn't work for me. I'm like, what the f- guy, what the fuck? And then she's like, fine, and then leaves. I'm like, well, this guy's a real nice guy. Like, man, hey, this, he's this, got he's got a fucking daughter to fuck. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, yeah. We're okay. This guy was courting this Linda Blair. Creep. In the beginning of this movie, he's courting Linda Blair, and then he's like, well, fuck that shit. I got a daughter. And, like, she is uh, smoking hot. And so I'm going to just forget this, about this Linda. This film is problematic. <laughs> it's a sweet, tender moment. It's going to be very, very awkward at the country club <laughs> when all these three are there. <laughs> yeah, he brings her to the next tennis lesson. 
Oh God! He makes her and Linda play doubles. You know, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. You guys want to come over for a jacuzzi? <laughs> yeah. I would have liked it if he just explained the truth. He goes, Linda, look, trust me. We'll we'll hang out another time. I have a naked girl who I th- actually thought was my daughter, but she's actually not. So it was really nice. By the way, you're the one who helped me figure out she wasn't my daughter. She's upstairs naked right now, so I can't really let that go to waste. You know, I don't know how much longer this is gonna last. So if, maybe I'll call you next week. You know. Okay. How about this? Linda literally called him to tell him that when she was already basically on her way over. Yeah. Why not just wait till she came over? <laughs> Well, because she wanted to just confirm everything, you know, and just make sure, you yeah. know. A daughter in the bed was worth two in the bush. <laughs> so we go to morning. Uh, we cut to the bedroom, and uh, Allison's sleeping, and Daddy is sneaking a bag of something out of the room? Yeah, I didn't get that. Was it like a bag of <laughs> cash for her not to go what through? What the fuck? Because he comes back. This is never explained. He, yeah. like, sneaks out a giant duffel bag full of something. He's, like, sneaking out of his own house. Hmm, okay. Yeah. But then he sneaks into his own kitchen and pours orange juice. Yeah. And then... And then brings it back to that. She also has to wake up and flash the camera just so, you know. Yeah. It was in the contract. There's oh, got to be at lovely. least 40 breasts of this movie. And so they're that like, pouring oh. orange juice, too. We're watching mimosas in real time. Yeah. Like, he can't even just, get one God. of the bottles open. Like, it's a long time. Like, we watch a man struggle to open a bottle of Snapple, basically. <laughs> but yeah, but that's also weird. Like, they didn't have a box of orange juice, like the cardboard box where you just pour it out. He had to have two glass bottles in his... Hey, Richie Rich. Yeah, that's yeah. fancy. He's like... You gotta have it out of a carafe. Yeah, you he's can't. like one of those guys, he's like, I ain't drinking my Coke out of a can. Fuck yeah. you, bottle, baby. He's the type of guy that drinks Diet Coke out of a glass bottle. Like, there's literally no point. You gotta get that Mexican Diet Coke. Yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a fucking mm. classy motherfucker, this guy. <laughs> there's no sugar. <laughs> Well, still important. It's, Doesn't it's give a shit. The feel of the glass. <laughs> he just likes knowing yeah. that he did. The feel of the glass on your lips, Hughes. You wouldn't understand. Oh uh, yeah, I guess not. <laughs> you you wouldn't know like Mike knows. And Mike loves yeah. the ribs. I like the finer things. Okay. Something's feeling someone in the lips. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, the he glass comes- ones aren't supposed to go in your mouth. <laughs> He comes into the room calling her. He calling Allison. He's like Allison, Allison, and she's gone. And I write, dude. <laughs> This is sick, man. Yeah. You're calling this girl by your dead <laughs> daughter's name that you just fucked. Like, what? this is so bizarre. Then, I thought she ran off, like, with his money or found something. She's gone. Wouldn't no, that have been better? Instead, he goes onto his patio, which apparently is kind of like, like, I don't know how to explain it other than, like, I don't know, like, some sort of future room where you can see into different areas of the world or something like this is he walks out onto the balcony of a neighborhood street and sees her on a beach what now he does not live on a beach like but he walks into a room that somehow transports you into another place yeah. Yeah. he literally has a, a house that has a fence around it and then trees and then behind the trees is a beach apparently because Whoa. we will never get the beach and the house in the same scene like okay. like imagine if somebody lived in a forest in a movie but when they looked out their front window it's the beach that's how off-putting this is it's a real house too <laughs> yeah I mean, they <laughs> they open the door and now we're in the jungle that's yeah. certain parts of oregon but you know yeah and my <laughs> and miami so yeah apparently miami, miami. yeah so <laughs> he walks out and he looks out of the balcony and he sees a music video going on we got she's on the beach in slow motion with a dog we're hearing a saxophone busey's there i wrote the same Busey's- thing he's yeah. got to be inches away from this right yeah. like he's looking into busey's head <laughs> I think he is. also the dog did you, anybody else notice that the dog looked like it was attacking her yes because she was running and it was like jumping on her and she had the necklace this time <laughs> Because that came back into this movie. I was like, wouldn't it be funny if this turned into dogs all of a sudden? Like, <laughs> Oh, your favorite. And, and, and she's, girl and just she's running murder. topless. And you can see Janine, poor Janine is like trying to get an ha- arm up to try and shield herself a little yeah. bit. Because that's not comfortable. No. God. Yeah, and the director has already said cut 50 times because he's like, get them out. Of the, get those arms out of the way. If only we could <laughs> cut them off. And at this point, watching this weird music video, I'm realizing that the majority of this film is just the parts of the porn that you fast forward. <laughs> Well, yeah. that's, that's this whole movie. That's what yeah. I think this whole movie is. Is like we know you can fuck, but let's see if we if you can act. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly what, what the director said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to Ernest Borgnine, <laughs> and the answer is she can't act. She went on Ernie. and fucked. <laughs> is that every like the beginning of every Crown International interview like audition? 
Well, I've already seen you can fuck. Can you act? <laughs> yes. We'll find out. <laughs> if you want the other side of this fifty dollar bill. <laughs> the other side of this fifty dollar bill. We never pay the full thing up front. No. <laughs> Is it just like, you know, 50 staple to like a piece of paper <laughs> yeah, signed? Half, half, half. Yeah. Half. half yeah. I was, I was thinking to have her run on the, the beach. What if they just made her run with her arms? Her like back? they handcuff her? Yeah. <laughs> like you handcuffed. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> so, or they're we trying get, to get that shot of that girl where the, the dog bites the, the uh, bikini bottom off. It, lo- oh, it God. looked like it was <laughs> going to happen. Copper tone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she also had big tails. <laughs> That's really all we were going for. Yeah, I uh, like the copper toad bottle. You know, if we hit it not, just right, we can get a sponsorship for this movie. Yeah, that's not a grown woman on that bottle. Well, you could have fooled me. <laughs> God. Looks like my Allison. <laughs> You think this was like a sympathetic thing where like the director was trying to be like, you would do it too, right? I mean, you you also, oh God. like, I had, okay, uh, <laughs> evidence in court. <laughs> <laughs> you would do it too, right, Anna? Your Anna? Maybe it's not part of the script writing. There's no, there's no family tree script writing. Put yourself in my shoes. <laughs> this is all some elaborate, ara- like elaborate ruse yeah. of like a rich guy. Like, I can't his own daughter he's like no no I will make evidence to prove that other people would do it I'll hire Ernest Borgnine I'll hire Linda Blair everyone's gonna see this movie and they're gonna understand yeah yeah they're gonna get it and so he shows it he goes you would you do where she's at right and everyone else is like fuck no why is everybody so quiet (laughs) okay so then basically we watch a man on a balcony screaming at nothing and a woman on a beach screaming at nothing their eyelines don't match that's kind of how I felt watching this. <laughs> I am both that man on the balcony and that woman on the beach. Because he the screams at her, he's like, hey, come up here. And she goes, no, you come down here. We're in the same scene. Yeah. And we never see... No question. <laughs> Guy on the yeah. spaceship is like, you both come up here. <laughs> and so then uh, she sees the news van and of co- course. at the beach and Cody's just standing outside. Well, she rolls down her window and just stares at her. And then all of a sudden... Uh, Allison just runs away. She comes back to the house. She's all in a heap. She's all upset. And the guy gives her a towel and and he's like, what's wrong? And she's like, can you hide me? I just saw the TV people. And then they go inside and she says the TV people will ruin everything. I'm like, it's just turning into like poltergeist. (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean the TV people? Oh, God. Uh, Then he kisses her. They fuck on a tile floor. (laughs) So that that's was how the scene ends. Wasn't that, that was the same line where she says, "Don't let the reporter find out." I'm really happy with you. Yeah, I'm so happy with you now. And then he goes, Look, uh, "This is the first part where now they're falling in love." Yeah, uh, because this is a love yeah. story arc, and oh, love God. is a sex on a cold tile floor, guys. It is a software. Mike has There's always no... said that. <laughs> This is That's shot, what I've said. This is shot like a softcore porn scene, like where they they zoom into the thigh and the hand brushing mm. it. Oh it, yeah, it's like yeah, practice. It's, uh, oh. uh, wow, <laughs> it's like that Madonna video where the matador died. <laughs> so right now you're super hard, and we're gonna cut. Yeah, we right got to, it. Right hard and soft, soft, my friend. Soft, right to a dead body. We cut to a dead man. <laughs> you can't get softer than that. <laughs> it's one of my little. <laughs> He thought it was going to be good. So we go to the dead guy for the start of the movie. And I write, this was like days ago. Yeah. <laughs> like literal days ago. And then they find this dead Speedo guy uh, had stolen $20 million or something and hid in his safety deposit box in the Bahamas. They also find a picture of him with Allison, which she's still topless in, by the way. <laughs> and I just write, okay, thanks. That's, sure. Okay, that's the movie. And then Ernie, so okay, so basically Ernie just tells everybody that. And he almost kind of shakes his head at the camera like, yep. That's uh, what they told me. It was supposed to be a vaca- vacation in Miami, everybody, and this is what I'm doing. <laughs> so then uh, Allison, <laughs> this is like a timeshare meeting. Like, <laughs> you get a free vacation, but you got to start a movie, Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Allison and Daddy are eating lunch. Yeah, we cut back to the house. Okay. Uh, and she says that she's always starving after sex. And <laughs> she's so hungry, she, like, takes his plate and starts eating it off his and everything. <laughs> By the way, let me tell you, there's not a... So, they're, are they, like, eating naked on the towel floor now? Just, like, Cheetos? <laughs> no, they're eating... Cheetos and stuffing and it, it's potatoes much worse. and gravy? It's like watching a woman eat hard-boiled eggs next to a pool is what we do. It's very <laughs> off You know, like you do? Yeah. It's, <laughs> like you do. Well, that's what happens. I'm like, what the and hell am I watching? God awful, <laughs> it's a god awful ugly yeah. 80s 
kitchen too because the countertop is like this weird blue oh yeah and okay. like brown it was fucking it was it was can, we, can we also say yeah. that this woman weighs conservatively 60 pounds oh like maybe. she is literally a skeleton and i'm like she would not eat any of that <laughs> not even close well, well, maybe, maybe that's how she burns it off Mike. <laughs> yeah yeah you know she's yeah. very active yeah. uh and then this is when she's he goes oh allison oh allison and wipes her face with a napkin and i'm like uh <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this is this role play is going a little far, <laughs> and she that's when she says, uh, "He goes, is your name really Allison Spencer?" And she goes, "I don't know, but I can change it." And he goes, "No." And you're like, "I'm good, movie." He says, <laughs> "You you can stop that." He says, "Exact quote: Oh no, no, I like it just fine." <laughs> and I write, "The fuck is wrong with you, dude?" <laughs> like this is wow. So then we go to the kitchen. He uses what you're saying, very 80s kitchen. Oh, God. It was super 80s. It looks like a, a, a boat galley <laughs> <laughs> with blue countertops. Oh, God. Oh, it's and, bad. And oak cabinets that are just oh, fucking Jesus. disgusting. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well. uh, so then we watch him wash dishes, by the way. Yes. And then... In real time. Yeah, in real time. Yeah. Then he puts it away and he goes... Uh, some like he goes, hey, where'd you get that picture of me? And this is when the movie is very confusing. Is she says my mother gave it to me, and I'm like, huh? And then she says, and I quote Chris, he goes, your mother, and she says, yeah, she was your lover. And he goes, let's be serious. And she says, she starts screaming, this wouldn't be the first time a father fucked his daughter. And I write, what movie am I watching? What is going on? So we have two lovebirds. No, she has called him out for fucking her, even though she was this involved is... too. <laughs> he hauls back and slaps her. Oh, he gives her five Oh, cross. yeah. He gives her what for, huh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, real hard. It's uncomfortable. Then I mean, she, everything else is too, but this is uncomfortable. So she, she basically just says, you fucked your daughter twice. He slaps her in the face. Then she starts fighting him. Then he like grabs her by the face and he's like, you okay? You okay, baby? You okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Like, like You just make me so angry. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> man. This Are is... we supposed to root for anybody in this like, movie? You all just started, started turning into Travolta first. You're right. It's <laughs> like oh so like a courtroom case trying to be proven. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you would have also hit a in that situation, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I, I was this so really, shocked. This feels like, what was the one you guys did? The babysitter one? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. The whole thing was just a guy. <laughs> trying to explain himself through a movie he's like it's okay <laughs> See, wouldn't, you, wouldn't you have done this yeah i mean my wife is a chunky. Jesus, if it pleases the court because it pleases me <laughs> thank you i'd like to call my next person to the stand mr woody allen everybody <laughs> <laughs> now what do you agree with this movie am i right it's cold. It's a draft. <laughs> <laughs> I th I'll take that as a yes, everybody. Thank you very much. Very much. We look forward to your next movie where you fuck a young woman. So it's, it's okay. It's all okay, everybody. Oh, Hollywood's <laughs> gross. Someone close a window. <laughs> okay, then I write this movie. This scene ends with maybe the worst cut in movie history. And I'm not exaggerating because it goes from him like grabbing her in the face and saying, you made me slap you. You, you know, you made me do it. Say that, it was, say that it, I made you do it. Yeah, it was your fault. It was your fault. <laughs> and and the, do we ever find anything else out about this picture? Nope. No, this nope. is the last this time it. it's brought we'll up. We'll never bring it up. That's a wrap on that picture. He's like, you know that whole thing about me fucking you and you're my daughter? Let's just not talk about it because <laughs> this is working for me. And I <laughs> really don't want to mess this up. <laughs> and so then... Worst cut in movie history is it goes from that of him saying, like, it's your fault, not mine, to a shaky shot of a helicopter <laughs> and, like, a car below. And I'm like, the fuck? What the hell is going on? And then Ernie's on the phone in the car. And then Daddy and Allison are now immediately in the living room. And we're, in, we're into the middle of another mm -hmm. scene. Yeah, we've missed something. It's like, like something's missing now. What the fuck thing. just happened? It was like they hit the hard 90 minutes on that VHS. Yeah. Like, we only ordered the 90 minute one. You gotta cut out five minutes of this movie. Just find time and just get it the fuck out. But keep that fucking <laughs> three minute intro, you assholes. <laughs> and yeah, I paid for that fucking song. Also, do not cut when he says that it's her fault that she got slapped because I need that in my court case. <laughs> they tell me I only have 90 minutes to present. So, God. <laughs> So uh, Ernie's on the phone. He's like, hey, um, do you know that Allison girl? And then the guy's like, no, I told you I don't. And then he just hangs up on her, on the cop. Yep. 
uh, and then the phone rings again immediately, <laughs> and he answers. He goes, "Look, she's here. If you want to talk to her, I'll, will you leave us alone?" And uh oh, it's Linda. <laughs> <laughs> And she says, what? Uh, who's us? What are you talking about? <laughs> and he goes, oh, Sally, Sally. Oh, sorry. I thought it was somebody else. What's up? What's going on? Huh? Uh, and she's like, you missed our tennis game at 10. And he's like, oh, yeah. Sorry about that. I was uh, <laughs> knee deep in my daughter. I mean, uh, well, my, I don't know what <laughs> yeah. I was doing today. <laughs> Talk about a first world problem. She's going to call him up and bitch him out about missing his 10 o'clock tennis game on a Wednesday. (laughs) (laughs) And then he goes, you want to reschedule for five? And she goes, no, and just hangs up. And she's like, that's all they had me do today. Thank you. Uh, Then the doorbell rings. And that's when we get a Hell Squad quote. As he says, it's like fucking Grand Central Station in here. (laughs) (laughs) What is this, Grand Central Station? That's how he says it. (laughs) Then he goes to the door, and this is when the movie just gets so confusing. That's he, Linda's kid, isn't he, it? L- I'm sorry, Linda's kid? Yeah, she had kids. Do, is this? Did you know this, Bobby? She had two boys, so this was one of them. The fuck? So, and he was supposed to like take him to there, and then when they, she was done, yeah, it's whoa, weird. Whoa, 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 wait a second. This is a huge clue. Linda the has degree. children yeah. in this movie? I didn't yeah. pick up on that at all. But huh. what, what's even weirder, she's You're bitching. You're blowing my fucking mind What's here. weird is she's bitching him for not being there, but then he, the kid shows up to get a ride to the tennis place. He would have already been there at the tennis place if he had made that appointment. So why would that kid ever come? But yeah, he was taking... That's Linda's kid. Okay, what happened? <laughs> I'm shocked, Chris. I, I did not know this was part of the movie. Did they die? What I see... <laughs> because he said his mom wasn't okay. there to take him to the, to the tennis because she was there and missed... <laughs> what Hughes is not telling you is that there's a child at the door. Yeah. And this... So daddy runs out and starts screaming at a kid. He goes, I don't want to fuck you. Don't. And there's this kid and he goes like, oh, hey, Mr. So-and-so, you're supposed to teach me tennis today. And he's just like, oh, sorry, little Billy. Uh, let me go and take you to the fucking thing. And the, Right. We're just like, what the... What the... What? What? It's going on. Yeah. Yeah, because whatever Linda's name was in that, he goes like, my mom couldn't take me. Da, da, da. He's like, oh, well, she just called me. I'm gonna, I'll am i take you over there right now. So away. apparently he has a lesson with him, yeah. right? So then we just cut to Linda now arriving at the house. Yeah. So all of a sudden, Linda Blair just shows up to the house and she pets a dog. And then... Does she, she take it away with her? <laughs> no. No. She pets a dog and then she walks up to the front door and she's like knocking on the door and ringing on the doorbell and she's like, I know you're in there. Answer. Answer. And then... Allison's Al- upstairs Allison's naked. Allison's in the tub again. And this is what I write, by the way. I mean, I mean, seriously, how many goddamn baths does this girl need to take? Never heard fucking of a shower. clean enough, okay? She'll <laughs> never feel clean. She fucking <laughs> takes like 10 baths a day, this girl. Dude, her skin is crawling from fucking her dad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, if she's taking so many goddamn baths, she's going to start scraping that skin off. like you, Bathing in per- gasoline. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to turn into a Clive Barker movie. <laughs> Permanent waterlogged. So she <laughs> she puts on a towel as she walks downstairs, and Linda like, sees her through this door window, and she goes, ah! Ah! <laughs> She's like, I see her, you son of a bitch! I see her! I see her! Cut. And uh, I, I think <laughs> Linda might appear again in the movie, but I'm not so sure. I yeah, I don't, might be it. I think no. I oh think no! There's wait, one more. hold on. There's an amazing. Yeah, yeah. The last scene of Linda is probably my favorite scene, maybe of any movie she's ever been in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Linda rings the doorbell a bunch. Yeah. Okay. So we got that. Then the motorcycle guy shows up, <laughs> and the dog barks at her, at him, and he shoots it. Why must we always hurt the dog? I don't know, but there's another movie where a dog dies. One of many. By a gunshot. Uh, Then Motorcycle sneaks in the house, and, like, basically there's this whole, like, he's hiding, Mm -hmm. or she she sees him, and then she hides, and then he's searching around. There's only... Okay, so we can speed through that, but there's only one good scene, and that's when he (laughs) goes... Well, he goes into the bathtub, and he sees the... The water there and it's all frothy. So he takes out his gun and just shoots into it. And man, why must we always hurt the hot tub? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like, so he's trying to be sneaky, and but he just, then he just shoots the gun right into him in the yeah, tub. And, and then he wouldn't put his hands. Like it's a lake. <laughs> yeah. And he wouldn't put his hands into the tub. Yeah. So he finds like a toilet uh, brush and like sifts through it and finds a towel. Wait, he put really? his hand in the tub. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know. And yeah, while all he's this is afraid going it's on, like a yeah. saw trap in there. Like. <laughs> <laughs> be a bear trap in the hot tub. <laughs> like Again. he rides around on a motorcycle, but there's this little guy on a tricycle that pulls up next to him. <laughs> Jigsaw comes out of nowhere. 
<laughs> so and th- during this whole scene the soundtrack is like a phone that no one's answering right yeah it's pretty horrible so so after he shoots the tub is my favorite part of this scene is we somehow like go back out to the to the hallway that looks into the bathroom kind of we don't really know which part of the bathroom in the spa is but we're looking down a hallway and we can see a mirror in that mirror we can see allison Mm -hmm. then a door like a closet from the bathroom opens and the motorcycle guy walks in front of the mirror and then walks towards the camera mm-hmm. not seeing allison that somehow is in the mirror hmm. it's it's, it's uh, i the geography everything it just doesn't make any sense i, I thought the bathroom to the right by the way the next scene is he walks onto a balcony and she's on a roof yeah she's, like she's just standing on the roof and then ernest borgnine just shows up and he just he pulls out a gun and then he sh- kind of gets in a gunfight with the motorcycle guy but it's the slowest gunfight you'll ever see and in then your the life motorcycle guy, like after the, the the two gunshots goes off it kind of like has a, a a black mask on the helmet but like you can see them look into the camera and just kind of slide out of view like they, <laughs> they just scuttled out and they <laughs> okay <laughs> In that gunfight, by the way, did you notice this? Like, Ernest Borgnine is not moving. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> it, was, it was like they called cut and, he, and the director comes over. He's like, uh, Ernie, I'm <laughs> wondering maybe you could uh, maybe move a little bit, react to kind of these gunshots. Uh, first of all, don't call me Ernie. Never <laughs> call me Ernie. <laughs> Uh, second of all, no. <laughs> the, real, hip, uh, the hip's not what it used to be. <laughs> used, it was he's pulling a, a real Jan Michael Vincent on this project. Yeah, really. yeah it was yeah. A, like a patent scene. Oh, yeah. his, <laughs> his movement is, I I mean, you couldn't do less. Like, uh, he's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> you got it, cut. Uh, and by the way, this gunshot just this scene just cuts in the middle of the fight. <laughs> the motorcyclist gets away. Yeah, really. From inside of the house to outside, somehow gets away. No somehow way. Probably ran out to the beach. Yeah. yeah. yeah so Ernest Borgnine's in the front yard, mm-hmm. and the thing only thing we see is the motorcycle guy running downstairs, and then we just cut to tennis lessons. Hmm. Yeah, and smash so cut to tennis lessons. Daddy's giving a lesson to his two future uh, kids, kids from Linda. Yeah. You know, once he's done with his daughter, he's going to move on to Linda. Uh, he's going to be their dad soon. And so he's giving a lesson to this one kid. And then another kid runs up, who I assume is Linda's other son. I think so. And just says, hey, 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 the uh, alarm at your house went off. Mm-hmm. And and he's just like, ah, fuck. <laughs> and then just leaves. It's a good scene. To the house. He pulls up to the house. The news crew's there, of course. <laughs> Jesus. And the cops. Uh, Ernie's talking to Allison and he just keeps saying over and over did you see his eyes did you see his eyes <laughs> <laughs> I was like the fuck is that supposed to help because Ernie fucking saw that the person was in a helmet so why are you gonna yeah ask? but it's like do you see his face no I he's think like, he's, he's turning into Dr. Eyes. Loomis <laughs> did you see his eyes did you see his eyes, eyes. <laughs> eyes. <laughs> I saw pure evil today <laughs> you mean you saw his eyes like I was like no did he have kind <laughs> eyes <laughs> <laughs> he repeats it like four times and then Ernie takes daddy over and then he's like hey okay oh no i'm sorry he goes over to the news people he goes hey wait a second why are you even here and she's like uh and he goes give me that tape yeah give and, me that news and he's tape. like oh no this is protected he's like you're on private property like we have a full-on like court case going on <laughs> in this movie yeah. he goes you're on private property and if you air any of this footage i'll have channel 11 shut down but if you Shit. watch those cuts it goes from like a camera on the shoulder uh-huh. to like a tape in the hand and then ernie has it <laughs> yeah it's so weird like the camera disappears <laughs> And it Holy turns shit. into a VHS. And then, <laughs> then the next cut, it's in the VHS is in Ernie's hands. Okay, then this part is like, uh, this is how uh, a rich white man is treated by the police. Because Ernie goes, hey, let me talk to you for a second here, Daddy. And he brings him over to the car, and he goes, okay, look. She's going to be in a lot of trouble, okay? Because uh, a lot of dangerous people want her. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got some questions. So what I'm going to have you do is just keep her at your house for a little bit. So, you know, you have your little rendezvous and uh, do what you want. When you're ready, come down, you know, ask some questions. We'll figure out what's going on. But there's a lot of dangerous people looking for us. So maybe just keep her inside, you know, have a little weekend bedroom, if you know what I mean. But uh, I'm not going to take her down to the station or ask any sort of uh, questions. I want you to play house arrest. (laughs) Yeah, that's not how we do things in Miami, you know. Just eat out and eat in in that order. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, because basically he's just like you could like be the cop right you'd be like your own little police station here <laughs> protective custody Miami <laughs> let me give you a deputy badge we got any more hey we got any more of those deputy badges in Look, the just, just take these handcuffs it's good enough <laughs> 
Uh, so then we uh, just cut to a station, like a cut to a shot of the motorcycle guy riding around. Then we go back in the house. And this is... I'm bored. She says, <laughs> she throws down a remote and says, that movie sucked. Is how we get into this scene. Yeah, she's talking about this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little space balls the video. <laughs> All right, that's how we start this scene. And then, okay, so Daddy walks up to her and he goes, look, I'm going to need you to come clean with me. And she just stands up, undoes her robe, shows her boobs. She says, how's Daddy. this for clean? Yeah. And I just write, okay. And you know, really? I never thought I'd get tired of seeing a porn star <laughs> naked. Just stop it. <laughs> like, come on. Like, fucking knock it off. Okay. Look that up. He says, <laughs> he says, how's, she goes, how's this for clean? And then he just says, do you need some new clothes? Like, he's noticed, like, you know, I've noticed that you're actually naked all the time, but I'm kind of feeling like Bobby is right now. Like, it's losing its luster. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so maybe we can get you in something new so that when I take it off, it's actually a yeah, new experience. You really you know? kind of only got the one move. <laughs> it's like when you keep repeating a word. Yeah. It's like, you know. <laughs> So he goes, why don't I go to the mall, buy you some new clothes, huh? What size are you? Five. And he's like, okay, great. I'm going to go buy you some stuff. And she's like, <laughs> oh. And then she's like, I'm going to come with you. And then he goes, no, no, you're not. Uh, but didn't she say, like, I love you at this point or something? Like, they, that was a big guffaw. Not yet. No, oh, God. That scene is coming yeah. up. It's not earned at all. Uh, there is. I write, did the director also forget this was a scene in a movie <laughs> like this? <laughs> Should they all of a sudden just be like, yeah, I think we're good here. I thought we were going to get, like, a montage. Nope. Like a, oh, I wish. I wish, montage. like, a pretty woman montage. Where she keeps coming out in different <laughs> outfits and he's shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> too like I'm too sexy, you know. <laughs> uh, what and, you know, you, you have to have the one scene where he walks out in a dress and she's shaking her head. <laughs> and, you know, no, no. <laughs> Loose screws. <laughs> one where she walks out and Linda's there and it goes <laughs> <laughs> like you just cut to a shot of Linda with her two children at the mall having the worst day of her life <laughs> and she just sees this guy and this girl and she's just like you motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> yes you need that she needs to be sitting here, here the, here's that. how this goes they do the montage yeah. they finish it out she is now dressed as a Japanese schoolgirl, and he is dressed in like I don't know a pimp outfit yeah. and they're walking like through, Dolomite walking yeah, Dolomite. through the mall and he's walking through a mall, and then you see Linda and her two kids in the food court. Yeah, just she's got looking. she's got like half a fucking milkshake on her shirt from one of the kids who just knocked it over and she just looks <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like my fucking life <laughs> so then uh we go to the parking lot and i write the first thing i write is okay i have a few issues with this scene that are really really enraging me at the moment yeah this scene yeah one the news people are there again so they followed yeah. him to the mall which i was like the fuck is wrong with them apparently Two, he's the story now <laughs> He's carrying a shitload of boxes and she's nowhere to be seen, but we were led to believe that she was coming with him to the mall. So also, it, why would it make any sense to leave her alone in the fucking house when the last time he left her alone, she was attacked by a man? So maybe you should never let her out of your sight. Yep. But no, he left her at home while he's going for a little daddy shopping spree. Three. Uh, and you know at some point he asked some girl, some sales girl in the store if she could try something on of for him because this, this fucking creep. guy... And then three, fuck him for parking in two parking two spots. spots. <laughs> two spots. Two sp really? I was so fucking mad about that. Was that was the last straw. <laughs> wow. I was like, this, this, animal. this fucking asshole. I knew this guy was a fucking asshole. He parked in two spots. He backed into two spots. Fuck, backed <laughs> into two spots. By yeah, the way, yeah, the daughter <laughs> thing, yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> He backed into two spots. Fuck this Cock guy. Sucka. Yes, I was so mad at that. I was so, so mad at that. And then Cody, the hard hitting reporter, comes up to Daddy and she's like, What's really going on? And I write, I mean, seriously, like, what is going on? Maybe you could tell us. We're in love. Is this when she asks him to answer her off the cuff? Yes. <laughs> yes she and she, she she meant record, but she's like off the cuff. Tell yeah. me what's really going yeah, on. What's really going just on? Rapid fire. Like, do, you, do you find me attractive too? Because I could also pretend to be your daughter if that's what you're into. No, sir. I'm not interested. Oh, God. I'd fuck me. <laughs> that's what she looks like. <laughs> just, uh, you know, uh, Buffalo Bill. Uh, 
That's why they brought it Cody. up. Cody. <laughs> yeah, Buffalo Bill Cody. <laughs> Goodbye Horses kicks up on the van. <laughs> okay. So this is when we go back to the house, a little fashion show for daddy. As she walks fashion out. show, it's one, <laughs> one saran wrap of a dress. Yeah. Oh, God. This thing, you have to roll on. And she just goes, whoo, I'm a movie star. And then walks down the stairs with like a boa. And she says, so what did Billy ask you? And I go, yeah, what? who is Billy? And what did he ask you? That's very interesting. <laughs> and I read, I thought her name was Cody. And but that makes sense if it's Billy. It's Buffalo Billy. Yeah, Buffalo, Buffalo Billy. Billy. Yeah. yeah. But he <laughs> says, so she says, what did Billy ask you? And I'm like, that either was wrong in the script or she just fucking rolled with it and nobody noticed. <laughs> hey, uh... <laughs> The script supervisor's telling me uh, that we called her Billy. Fuck it. Nobody will know. No schedule here. It ends with a Y, doesn't it? Shut the fuck up. If there's tits in Clo- the scene, it doesn't matter what we say. Check the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then he says, by the way, okay. He goes, yeah, uh, she wanted to know if you're my daughter. And then they go, they share like a little laugh. They're like, oh, that's so ridiculous. I sure uh, hope not after all the fucking we've been doing. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. And then the script told Allison that she needs to cry. Because all of a sudden she just oh, like God. looks at him and then she goes, oh. And then <laughs> like kind of puts her hands on a railing and like puts her, her head in it. Because I write, because it's a fucking drought. Because <laughs> those tears are it's not coming. Yeah. <laughs> You have to have a heart to cry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Bessie's just not going to give on this one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, But she does do the great thing of like, I'll just cover it. Oh, I'm so upset. And like covering her face with her hands, you know? And then she just looks at her and she's like, I love you. And I'm like, that came oh, out of nowhere. Wow. I love you too. Then they kiss. And then they, he goes, let's go out and celebrate. And I just write, the hell just happened? They're supposed to stay inside. There's a literal killer that was just in yeah, their house. Yeah, but they're boyfriend, girlfriend now. So they have to yeah. celebrate. Well, they're going to celebrate in the, in the house at first, okay? Because first we go to tracksuit. Uh, and he's watching a video that the camera guy brought him. Yeah, you remember that guy? Way earlier <laughs> in the I movie. About that yeah, guy the for Oscar winner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was, he's watching. He goes like, oh, yeah, I know that broad. That's that guy. That's that broad that uh, was with the banana hammock guy. And yeah, she, that guy she, from the beginning of this movie. Yeah, she's probably got that necklace that I've been looking for with that twenty million bucks in a in a box. Yeah, in every other movie that has this kind of like, there's going to be some kind of object that has a key for for a, a, a safety deposit box. Yeah, the bad guys will always just say, "Just bring me the locket." Don't open it. Just bring me it. I'm not telling you why I want it, but I want that locket. Yeah. It's, this it's, one, they explicitly tell you, oh, there's a key to a lockbox in the yeah. Bahamas. Here's why it's valuable to I, me. Yeah, here's why it's valuable. Here's how much it's valued at. Here's why bring I'd probably to pay somebody to give it to yeah. me. <laughs> so they go to the house. Uh, we go back to the house, right? And they're just drinking together at his like bar in his house, his captain's bar. Sure. The inside of a ship. It does look like an inside, yeah. inside of a boat. Mm-hmm. This whole, uh, whole house. And she's like, I'm going to go dancing. <laughs> and he's like, well, we can't go outside. I mean, obviously, your, your fucking life's in danger. And then she's like, but I want to go. But I want to. And he's like, all right, fuck it. Uh, so we go to a dance club, and they're just she's cutting like, Venarius. <laughs> Venereal. <laughs> but I want to yeah. go now. Uh, all those Mr. other Parker. tests. Are, um <laughs> Linda, oh, I didn't know you'd call. Yes, the other test results are in, just in case you want to know. <laughs> uh, these ones are not so good. <laughs> She's not yourself. your daughter still. <laughs> There's a lot of positives yeah. in this one. <laughs> but you're going to need to come in. when you sit down or pee? <laughs> it, it should, actually, at this point, it should be burning all over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we go to the dance club, and as I write, they cut a rug like only two white people can. Oh, absolutely. the arms are moving, but the hips are not. They're just going like, <laughs> Hey, that's how I dance. <laughs> now, question: I was pretty young in the '80s. I wasn't going to clubs. Were all clubs populated by people in middle age? <laughs> There's not a person under forty. You mean in this by club. like the film crew? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because uh, everybody is of uh, advanced age and also wearing like sweaters. Yeah, this to is a dance like when, club. this is like when they went to that uh, strip club at the Andalus Cruise, <laughs> and everyone's okay. just sort of the crew and their wives. Yeah, we are in. What we'll find out is a mall. So yeah. this makes a lot of sense with okay. the crowd. We're in a, like, not a strip mall, a mall. 
and uh, everybody in this club in Miami and hot, hot, humid Miami is wearing like a, a like a three knit, piece suit, like a fucking knit sweater or three piece suit into this. Like they're going to work, which was the, the style oh, at the time. Yeah. So, <laughs> man, this needed some kill bots. We needed the robots <laughs> from shopping mall to show up. Uh, then for for no reason at all, we watch a lady for two minutes take pictures of couples. Why not? Like hmm. we literally watch like when you walk into Disneyland. Mm-hmm. And they're like, do you want a picture? And the people are like, no, no. And then finally, there's a couple that goes, yes. And a guy like puts his hand around a lady. Stop yeah. touching me. We watch the whole picture being taken. There's a couple pass holders. <laughs> then she's like, take this card to the front. You know, you could get it developed if you want. Uh, and then finally, he t- she takes a picture of Daddy and Allison. And then Daddy walks over and he's like, no, no, I'm going to need that film. Did you watch as he walked away, two guys like swarm this girl and start fucking Yeah, like, and did you notice one of them like bumped her real hard oh, yeah. and they were like, oh shit, don't cut. Just keep rolling. Keep going and pick it back up. It was like Night at the Roxy. Like oh, these really? two guys just getting in between. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chris Kattan comes over and does the hip bump on her. And so then he's like, hey, I'm going to need that film. And but why? Because no one can know they were there. But it's like, who's going to know the when, fucking when one that, person when the, who develops When the, the news crew gets a hold of this <laughs> yeah. camera. Yeah. Well, they do follow him everywhere, so right. I assume they'll also be buying his picture. Also, you don't get to do that, dude. You don't go to a public place where they have a photographer working and go, give me the film. Okay. Well, yeah, he does yeah. pay her. Yeah, but here's my question. They have this this photographer walking around a dance club. Just go and get those. Devel- You're not going to get those pictures tonight. Oh, no, like, they can't because she has a fucking dark room in the club. Oh, that's right. She has a dark room really? in the She's club. Got everything. Yes. Really? Okay, this mall. Yeah, the mall. She just goes to the one-hour photo. So It's the 80s when the mall had is, literally everything. This also really bugged me, too. I don't know if you guys noticed this. He starts haggling her with her on the price of the pictures, like the, the roll of we'll, film. We'll think that the roll of film probably costs like $3. Well, because she goes, <laughs> I need to pay my rent. And he's like whoa okay what are we talking here and she says like thirty dollars or something yeah. and he's like how about like 20 or something and then she's like no like 30 bucks and then he hands her money and says keep the change he handed her and 40 like, he handed like, her 40 what? bucks like why are you gonna haggle if you're gonna give a ten dollar tip <laughs> I know. Wait, I was he's like, gonna haggle you're, down. Yeah, you're haggling, and then you pay more. He's gonna haggle. Like, can you break a? Can you break this? <laughs> <laughs> so that That's really cool. bugged me. So then she goes to develop pictures. We watch her develop pictures in a dark room, and then the door opens. She goes, "No, you're gonna ruin all the film." And then it's the camera guy, Chico, and uh, <laughs> this actor really got a hold of something because he just grabs this woman very inappropriately. Apparently, they're in a relationship together, mm-hmm. but it looks like a rape. Yeah, oh, shit. he just grabs her by two uh, two things sticking out of her chest, <laughs> like two things to hold on to, I guess, and it's like, Collarbone? Uh, okay, that, That's yeah. his finishing move. He, yeah. He's going to like get what he wants. He's yeah. grabbing onto the tits. Uh, yeah, and he uses them as like a, a stabilizing device. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and then... It's it's upsetting. Yeah. And Did he like throw her to the ground? He throws her to the ground, and she's like, oh, Carlo. I think... It, yeah. And then they just like look at each other and they're like in love. I'm like, what the, hmm. what the fuck? Is this just like his normal way, his normal courtship? Is no, like- that's, that's how our parents did it back then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then uh, Daddy and Allison dance and the camera guy comes out and he goes, oh shit, it's that camera guy. We should get out of here. <laughs> yeah, but they're not going to go through the front. They're no. going to go through the back. Okay, by the way, Smart. where was the camera guy? On the dance floor, right? Yeah. Okay, so they walk upstairs. Then the photographer lady pulls a gun on them and goes, I need you to go in this room right now and talk to the camera guy. They walk right next door, and the camera guy's already in the room. And I'm like, the fuck? Magic. <laughs> well, <laughs> so now uh, you see me shit. Trap doors. Yep. <laughs> so uh, basically he's like, well, this is very upsetting too. Mm-hmm. This is like another Linda Blair movie like Savage Streets where he takes her dress and just pulls down the front of it. And exposes her breasts. He's going for the locket. And this is his move. He goes straight for breasts, this guy. He it's sees- like when Andre the Giant pulled off Hulk Hogan's cross. <laughs> <laughs> because he goes, where's the necklace? And she goes, what necklace? And then he just pulls down her dress and goes, that one. <laughs> and she goes, ah, like she's all freaked out. I'm like, all right, well, I mean, come on. That's, I'm not believing it. <laughs> no, they're right. I right. said, she's not a good actress. We, she wants those She should have been like, oh, finally. You realize how tight that dress was? <laughs> And so then they just kind of run around and like, well, okay. Uh, Daddy punches the guy 
and he, then he somehow falls into his girlfriend and shoots her she she shot herself or something yeah <laughs> I was very confused. Right in the boobs. Yeah, she shoots herself, and then (laughs) she falls dead. And then they're in a big chase. A foot chase. This is when we find out we're in a mall. Yes, all of a sudden. Yeah, that's when the discovery happens. I'm like, this all was in a mall. Cut to Hmm. they're running around a fucking mall, like the Mall of Miami, and they're just. It's a it's a huge mall. It's like five stories tall. Running in and out of Panda Expresses, Gaps. (laughs) You know, they're just like. (laughs) See the Foot Locker fly by? Yeah, yeah, this is very odd. And then they go to like a food court and they get in a big fight with the guy. They oh, they hid behind the corner. By the way, Daddy gets shot in the arm with a gun, but he no sells this yeah. shit like you wouldn't but like he's fucking Nick Cage and Con Air. Like he goes, <laughs> ah like he grabs his arm and, and she goes going. she goes, Did that hurt? And he's like, Yeah, no. And then they just keep running and he starts punching the guy with both arms at some point. You're like, Well Weird. that's okay. You know so. the adrenaline's pumping? <laughs> He gets in a fight with this guy, and then the the girl, Allison, takes a chair and pushes him over a ledge and kills him. This guy goes off this ledge like General Zod flying into the Phantom Zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we see two shots of him falling down, and then the last shot is of him falling up. <laughs> what? Like, I'm not kidding. He gets unstuck in time. <laughs> they like, took, when he lands, he's going to be in the Old West. They took the first shot of him falling off this thing and reversed it so you would think it looks like he's falling more, but he's just falling in reverse. Oh, my God. It's the most confused. I rewound it three times and watched it. I was, like, almost going to pass out from how much it was disorienting me. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is going on? It's like looking at a funhouse mirror all yeah. of a sudden. Like, somebody just puts it in front of your face all of a That's sudden. bizarre. And so then he's dead on the ground. And by the way, there's just a random cutaway to like a, a family of Asian people that are watching. And you're just like, the fuck does this have to do with anything? Like they just look over a balcony and they're like, oh, huh? That's that's the scene. And then also Allison is just like, oh, like she's shocked. She killed a guy. I'm like, you pushed him over the <laughs> ledge. Where'd you fucking think he was going to go? <laughs> So he's in a pool of blood. They just walk out of the loading dock of this mall where apparently, again, this guy parks like a fucking asshole everywhere he goes. He parked right in the fucking loading dock. He's like, oh, no, I don't, I don't have to park anywhere in that club parking lot. I'm a special rich man, tennis guy. Hmm. I'll park wherever the fuck I want. <laughs> and uh, then he pulls away from the mall, by the way, driving on the curb and everything. I'm like, yeah. fuck you again, guy. Fuck you, OJ, and your goddamn Ford Bronco. His black Ford Bronco. <laughs> they drive off in a car. Okay, they're in his truck, his Bronco. The motorcycle follows. And then Daddy asks her why the medallion is so important. She goes, "I don't know, but it sure looks expensive." Or she says, uh, "It doesn't look expensive." <laughs> and I said, "Hold on, whoa, whoa, hold on." She doesn't know what this fucking thing does, and she has literally killed a man and risked her life to no end to keep this medallion. And it looks cheap. And it's all what everybody wants. Just fucking give it to them. At this point, just throw it out the window and just be like, nope, there you go. You can have it. But they drive off into like a boat dock. Yeah. They get on a little boat, like a speedboat, and then they just go off. The motorcycle guy shoots them once. They go off into the into the ocean and then like they do a horseshoe and go right back onto the beach. <laughs> because the next really? shot is them on dry land. Like, and then they're just running. And this whole scene, Chris, is so Allison says, I can't run anymore. And Daddy says, you got to keep going. A moving target is hard to catch. Oh, oh name of the movie. Yep. <laughs> and Bam. from that awesome line, <laughs> we cut to them in a hot tub. Yeah. Moving target is hard to catch. Get in the tub. <laughs> yeah. We go back to the tub. The and jacuzzi. So this time, though, Daddy's in the tub. Not her yet. She's still in her dress. And we're yeah. like, okay, maybe she she's going to stay clothed. Nope, she just gets in the tub. So again, they were being chased by a murderous motorcycle man. Who knows where he lives? Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to take Because he's already been to the house and yeah. hunted them there. And they're like, but there's plenty of time for a bath. Come I on, mean, let's get in. Clearly, you need a bath. Yeah. And so they both get in the tub. He also says, I think it's time we call the cops. And I write, you think? <laughs> But no, let's fuck first. And so then we go to Ernie and a cop. They're at the hospital watching some older couple cry over the blanket of that other girl who died, which we then find out that wasn't his daughter either. So it is just a A random picture, a random picture and a girl who had the same name as this guy's dead daughter. These are her real parents. They're crying over her dying. None of this makes any sense. But her name's Allison. 
Yes, but the pieces are falling apart. Like this, <laughs> this is like a puzzle that you tried to transport somewhere, and it's just the pieces are dropping all over the floor, and you're like just trying to frantically put it back together. We call that and plot, it's just not working. Gets lost. Right. And so then we go back to home, and uh, Daddy and Allison wake up in the morning watching a fucking nature TV show. Yeah, they're fucking in bed watching <laughs> Animal Planet. And like all, all of a sudden, the guy's face is all bruised up. It was like that's news to me. Okay. Uh, no, I thought he was wearing sunglasses. That like they looked like Jordy <laughs> hey, LaForge you don't know sunglasses. What <laughs> between Hot Tub and BBC's Planet Earth, we don't know. Like I thought they were doing some sort of weird uh, next generation role play because it <laughs> like from my shitty view, it looked like he was wearing Jordy glasses. Weird. Uh, she's got the the wharf forehead. Yeah, <laughs> Uh, so, by the way, she has to flash the camera again because the contract demanded it. Mm. And this is getting both fucking of them, tedious. Both of them. Get the, <laughs> tedious? Pull the it's covers down. Tedious. <laughs> pull them tedious. <laughs> it's an exercise in tedium. <laughs> uh, and Allison's like, you know, I feel real great today. Why don't we go for a swim? And he's like, I don't think that's a good idea at all. I mean, we were almost killed last night. Cut to they're going swimming anyways. <laughs> but they're not really swimming. They're just kind of like running into like ankle deep water and splashing. It's a beach other. frolic. <laughs> it's like it's a like frolic. after uh, Stallone and Carl Weathers finished running on the beach. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're celebrating. Yeah. That part where Carl Weathers straddled Stallone. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you did it, man. <laughs> You go, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to fight the fight? <laughs> so they, they go to the beach. They're running around frolicking. The TV crew is there filming them the whole because time. The director's there. there. Yeah. Gil Weathers never leaves that town. And I write, I, I, I can barely see because it's a long shot, but I believe Allison has a top on. Uh, she, she's clothed. I was like, they I sell? I was like, I didn't know that they sold bikinis with tops. According to this movie, I thought they mm. were just the bottoms. Like yeah. we're in France or something. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> then they cu- we cut back to the house and nobody's there but the phone's ringing. Okay, it's sure. Linda. It's yeah. Linda, and I write it's Sad Linda. Sack Linda. It's Linda. Remember her? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a scene of Linda Blair. This is the last time we're going to see her in the whole movie. She's just sitting in an office looking pissed on a phone. <laughs> and I was like, this is the single best scene of Linda I've ever seen. Is her just going like, "Fuck this, fuck life." And that's it. Cool. She's a fucking successful doctor. She doesn't need a tennis pro. <laughs> but she's like obsessed with this yeah. tennis guy. Maybe he must, you, know, you were supposed to pick up my kid and take him to tennis lessons again today. You fucked that up again. Like, Thanks seriously, Linda came to this movie to play tennis and get cheated on, and she was out of tennis. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all she does in this movie is yeah. just like, uh, where, are you, where are you going? <laughs> Oh, you're out? Okay. It was almost like Linda was supposed to be a main character. They're like, but we got this younger girl. And she's like, are you fucking kidding me? Uh, don't worry, Linda. We'll find a place for you in this movie. <laughs> yeah, you want to be a doctor, right? You'd be like a smart lady and everything. You wanna, oh. you, it's time for you to spread your acting wings a little bit. Why don't we try <laughs> Dr. Linda? Yeah. Dr. yeah. Linda. How's that sound to you? Well, I do like Well, we that. don't have a stethoscope, but you know, we can... <laughs> How do you feel about only having five lines? Maybe we'll just kind of cut those out. You know, it's less work. I mean, we'll, we're not going to pay you the same amount. I mean, obviously, <laughs> you, we flew you all the way to Miami. You can't leave now. I mean, <laughs> but uh, uh, what do you think? <laughs> Maybe a bag of sugar might sweeten the deal a little bit. <laughs> I think that my girlfriend's now going to star in the movie <laughs> instead of you. So, uh, we, Okay, so... We go to the beach. They're kissing on the sand. And I write, the news news crew must be getting a good show, I guess. Uh, then we cut to a sky shot of the motorcycle riding near the beach. Again. Yeah. This makes Weird. no sense. Okay. <sighs> then we go to a parking lot. Daddy and Allison come back from the beach. A guy... Okay, this is great, though. The guy walks over steps. Mm-hmm. So Daddy walks down his steps. And he looks at the guy and goes, hey, what's going on? And then the guy pulls out an Uzi. And he's like, come <laughs> with me. And he goes, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so they get into a car and then they meet with tracksuit Mr. Big in front of a white supremacist graffiti which was very odd oh. to me <laughs> can't, we can't move that scene down like three feet yeah. or I was paint like, it. did the crew put this here I mean there already was a guy with a yarmulke on and now we have a really? Nazi Holy sign shit. so it's a, it's, it's, a uh, it's bad graffiti and I think it reads like skinheads mosh here yeah it says really? skinheads mosh here not like March. somebody M-O-S-H mosh like somebody freshly spray painted it on the wall and I was like yeah you couldn't. I feel like the crew found that and was like well we gotta use they this had to it's like you couldn't yeah. move it this is a great feet. opportunity <laughs> look at this this is, this is real Miami <laughs> And they also, you didn't see it, but if you pan out, there was a bunch of tiki torches around them and right. everything. It was, it was, you know. Okay, so then we find out Alice's day. Okay, well, they meet up with Tracksuit, so the Oscar nominee. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm still in this movie, everybody. Uh, and he goes, hey, your name's not Allison, it's Kim. 
Yeah, new new character name. Yeah, and he goes, "Can you give me that medallion uh, that you wanted to? You said was no big deal or anything?" And she's like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." Goes to take it up, and then all of a sudden, everybody just starts getting shot, and uh, it's the motorcycle guy. We got a double cross. And then the so Daddy and and Allison just take off in a car, and then tracksuit is there with the motorcycle guy goes i'll kill you and then he just gets shot by the motorcycle guy and they film his entire death sequence yeah. where wow. he just goes well, you got right across, across the graffiti here. no shit yeah. yeah wow zoom in on that graffiti and they're like wasn't that great that we included this local culture uh so then we got a daddy and alice in the car he's like hey why does everyone want that necklace and she goes i have no idea but now i'm starting to think it might be worth something because everybody wants it now you realize this uh, and then i write it, or he goes uh, by the way, who are you? And I was like, dude, seriously? I thought you didn't care. You like, wanted to call her Allison. It's your daughter. Then you we can't get, get it up unless it's your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, can we just... By the way, can we pretend that your name's not Kim anymore? Because it's not... It's, it's not Bing's working for me. You know? It's a this Joe is, Dirt scene. <laughs> I'm your sister. I'm your sister. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Then we get into the longest chase scene. The longest fucking chase the blues scene. Bro- or the, yeah, the Blues Brothers chase scene. Yeah, where <laughs> cops just show up, and then they run into a lake, and then other cop gets shot these and runs into a car. These interior cop car shots are like fucking Red Leader of the X-Wings. <laughs> <laughs> the way they set up the camera for this. Yeah, and they also have similar lines. They're just like, yeah, I'll get out of that. And it's like, I, this nothing, but this means anything to me. Uh, and then all of a sudden the chase ends with uh, Daddy in a game of chicken with the motorcycle guy. And he loses. He loses even though the motorcycle guy got off the motorcycle. It just has a gun. He shoots the car once. to get our heroes to flip the car. Like, I don't understand what actually happens. Nobody it's, does. Like, a gunshot goes off Let's and then the car on. flips. And it, at first I thought both of them were dead. Like, I thought this was like the end of the teacher. Yeah. Like, where, <laughs> oh, God, where yeah. Everybody yeah. just dies, you know? Because they're just dead on the ground oh, harsh is what it truth looks endings. like right but they, yeah but they always have to land on the same side so that they're camera facing <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> so they're both uh, like sp- splayed on the ground dead and then the motorcycle guy comes over and i think takes the did he take the necklace no no no, no it was a was gonna shoot them oh yeah the motorcycle guy's gonna shoot them and then gets shot it gets shot in the back and then off, we find out yeah. that no somehow magically, even though he was not in this chase sequence or didn't know anything that was going on, Ernest Borgnine is just here. And by the way, hmm. I think now's a good time to point this out because this is when you notice it. At this point, the motorcycle guy is clearly a female. Yeah, it's like the changed. body frame has the way, changed. The whole movie, though, I was like... It's been a man the whole I movie. Thought, I thought the whole movie that it was going to be revealed that the motorcycle guy was Linda, which I thought it was going to be. I was hoping so I much. Been like, oh, fuck, please, please. This would have been amazing. so good if Linda was and the And when killer. this moment happened, and I was like, now suddenly, like Psychomania, every time they did a stunt, like the bikers changed genders. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, the, uh, yeah all of a sudden the biker has breasts. Yeah, the biker's which... got like the hips and the... Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, this is going to yeah. be Linda. She's in the same fucking suit from Savage yeah. Street. Yes, yes. Oh, and she had a no. crossbow. No. No, so Ernie shoots the the motorcycle guy, yeah. and then he goes over and takes the helmet off, and he's like laughing, he's like hey, 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 like giggling, and you see the long hair, and then you see that it's the news reporter. It's Cody Billy. Somehow, somebody that's been in a scene where the motorcycle <laughs> and the news van it is physically impossible for this to happen at the same time yeah, multiple times. Yeah, it's specifically just ten minutes ago when we saw the shot of them on the beach and filming them and then cut to a shot of the motorcycle arriving at the beach. It's like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> that pisses me off about any who done it. Like any who done it and then it comes up to be somebody that was impossible to ever be a suspect pisses me off because it's poor writing. It, it's, it's lazy. It makes no sense. I just was screaming in my notes at this point. This makes literal no sense. Like no sense at all. None. What was it like Scream 3 where like when they do the <laughs> whodunit reveal it's a character who hasn't been in the film. Yeah. yeah. They're like do you it remember that like, cousin brother? Of mine? Yeah. Like, Wait like, what? Huh? Oh come on. <laughs> I've been working on this whole movie. It was like Don Wiener's brother or something. She's like, <laughs> like wait, who? Like, like Don Wiener was like Jamie Kennedy's sister or something, and yeah. then she's like, and then my brother like was you the killer. A new and you're like, character the as the reveal. F- the fuck? <laughs> kind of like when Jason, the first Jason, and it turns out to be his mom. Well, though no one knows who it is. Yeah, oh, it's you know not what? really like a. It's not a letdown when that happens because there's no precedence. Right. You know what my favorite killer reveal of all time is? I still know what you're doing last summer, as I call it. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Uh, you said you've never seen that movie, right? No, I've seen the f- okay. First the second one. one is so good because in the first movie, the killer's name is Ben, right? And so then in the second movie, she has a boyfriend named Will Benson, and it's revealed that he's the killer, he's and she Ben's goes, son. "Will Ben's son, Ben son, Will." <laughs> Oh my god. And he's yeah. like, Yeah, it was right in front of you the whole time, you dumb <laughs> <laughs> How could you not tell? <laughs> I think one of my favorite uh Who Done It reveals was uh the fifth Friday the thirteenth movie. When it's revealed at the end that it wasn't Jason the whole time, but another character that we met a at the fucking, very beginning who fucked off for the rest of the a movie. Fucking janitor. No, it was a paramedic. A paramedic. A paramedic yes. who's mad about the death of his son from the beginning of the movie. But what they don't explain is how he put on a perfect Jason cosplay. <laughs> like he has a latex hood that has like wounds that Jason endured. And this is an urban legend at this point. There's I mean no, gained a lot of muscle mass too. Like how the fuck <laughs> did this guy Oh wow. I mean he yeah. was bulking up. It's like people yeah. now who go to comic conventions as Jason. He has yeah, a yeah. full getup. This guy has spent like a thousand dollars on a Jason costume. Jesus, this will really get him. Yeah, that'll show him. And at the end, you're just like the the person who you know the the heroine, the final girl, is, <laughs> looks down like I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? So so okay okay yeah we have, we have the, the the motorcycle is done, the tracksuit guy done. Yeah, and I would who say who was the motorcycle person working for that knew about this lock? The motorcycle guy, my understanding, mo- motorcycle lady was working for nice guy Eddie, tracksuit guy. And then yeah, upon because he called him the, in the beginning of the yeah, movie. And upon figuring out what the pendant was for, was going to take it for herself. But if that was the case, then mm-hmm. why did tracksuit guy have to have the camera guy inserted to work with her? Uh, yeah, exactly. Weird. It makes no that fucking makes sense. That makes no sense. I got nothing on that one. Because <laughs> okay. if he already has a person working, why are you going to put two people together to work? Or just put them together anyways? That is and why do you have to call the, the Okay, the that's producer. question mark profit. I Choose, don't know that one. We aren't even done with this movie. Yeah, this movie's <laughs> not done yet. Chris, if you thought this was done, no, we're going to fucking usual suspects this oh, shit. Oh, really? The real Kaiser Soze is revealed. <laughs> they got some... Okay, so all of a sudden, Linda's sitting in her office. Mm-hmm. She drops a coffee cup. And we just see it slow motion hit the ground. <laughs> And Ernest Borgnine just smiles, and then he shoots Daddy right through the middle of the head. Sure does. And blood just sprays onto the back of this car. Great shot, by the way. Yes. It's fucking great headshot. And really satisfying, because fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, man, did that feel good to see that And we even happen. get the usual suspects flashback, but instead of flashing back to, like, plot, it's just more that music video of that naked girl on the beach yeah. <laughs> getting bit by the dog. It's like his last memory is <laughs> oh, her. God. Because they really? actually were in love. Like, oh, he wow. flashes back to the beginning of the Beach Girls movie. Yeah. He's like, la, 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 Man, la. it's like Dan Haggerty flashing back to his coworker. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. And then we just see a guy squeezing mustard too hard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then he shoots the girl dead. And then he walks over and he takes that pendant. And then he sits in his car. And the, the other cop shows up and he's like, are you all right, Ernie? He goes, yeah, I'm fine. And then he kind of opens the back of that Legends of Hidden Temple pendant and he points the key for that lockbox right to the camera. Got to make sure the camera sees it because he's holding it at an angle that nobody mm-hmm. on earth would hold it. And then he just laughs and the movie ends. Well, they, they, wow. show, they show the ticket. Well, he laughs for like two minutes. Yeah, they, yeah. They, show <laughs> the, the they show the ticket for the uh, safety deposit box and one Polaroid of this girl topless. That's what he's mm-hmm. taking with him to the Bahamas. Yep. And then he heel clicks like newsies. Right out of this movie. Yeah. And yeah. The, and it, it ends on a shot of Linda in the office, and this voiceover goes, the, the best thing that devil ever did was... <laughs> Commence before they didn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we got the, the double, double cross. Borg9 said, fuck this movie, killed yeah. the whole cast and took yeah. off. <laughs> Kaiser Geezer. I got to say, the last, so oh, the last three minutes of this movie, brilliant. It's like, amazing. <laughs> And there's no real explanation as to what was going on. It's no. literally just oh, no. wow. I Borg didn't, I didn't literally just that. says Fuck I didn't it. call that end at all. You no, couldn't. I was thinking the whole time of like that killer is Linda. It's definitely it's because Linda. she's so underutilized in this movie. You're yeah, like, there's got to be a reason she's here. And it sounded like it was going to be her too. Yeah, it it's like I see, her. I see that perm coming and she's out. She's getting of that angrier <laughs> and angrier throughout the film. She's yeah. always around but not doing anything. You're yeah. like, of course, yeah, because it can't be this reporter. <laughs> She's already at the scene. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, she maybe even has an interaction with the motorcycle guy at some point, you know? Well, technically, like, when the motorcycle guy at the beginning with the car, the first car wreck with the van, the motorcycle person's running out with the, the gun... Nope. Goes back to the motorcycle, and then the news van pulls Like, apparently in. the motorcycle guy runs into a phone booth and changes real quick. Yeah. And where they hide the motorcycle, I don't know. Maybe in the van. In the news I, van. I don't know. We wow. never see the inside of the news van. Yeah. Oh, man. 
And this goes all the way the up. Twisted web. And another big lingering question was: uh, Do do Allison's tits have an oxygen deficiency? <laughs> like, does she breathe through her nipples? Yes. Why she, the fuck? <laughs> if you played that new uh, Middle Girl Solid, there's a person on there that has to breathe through her skin. Yeah, of course. Oh. Yeah, she's like a fish, I guess. She has gills. She's like the Mariner so. from Waterworld? Yeah. Uh, she <laughs> Meaning is, she pissed in his coffee maker? Her name's <laughs> Quick in that game. <laughs> she is wearing uh, clothes less than being naked in this movie. She's yeah. just always topless. She's too naked in this film. It's, it's really, it gets irritating. You're like, I don't need this anymore. Girlfriend that he had to put in the movie, I guess. So, you know, that was the director's girlfriend for the week. Yeah. And so after this experience, she said, ah, never mind, and just did porn. <laughs> oh, good for her. She's like, eh, kinda, it's less kinda, demanding. Kind of like not having to wear the clothes. <laughs> yeah, she realized that porn was less physically taxing than being in this movie. Like I don't maybe, have to run full speed on the God. beach. Maybe she kind of showed up to set without her clothes on. They're like, no, hold, we can't. What are you doing? You're supposed to be fully clothed. This is a PG rated film. She's like, I am fully clothed. <laughs> They're like, they just couldn't keep her, couldn't keep her clothes, yeah. you know? So, recommendations? Watch it. Oh, really? I thought you were going to be a no use. I, I, I was convinced you weren't going to like this movie. I, it is. It's 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 enjoyable to watch compared to the last two. So I think I just I, I, by juxtaposition, it's yeah, a great film. It's a good film. I, I'm I agree. You know, it's it's fun. It's worth checking out uh, for that bizarre ass ending. Uh, for that bizarre ass beginning, the middle's kind of you know the incest stuff's a bit uncomfortable, but it's just so wackadoo. You know, it, it's really if you're gonna watch a Linda movie, this is the one. Man, what do you think? Despite yeah. Jason Bateman not being in it, I really uh, enjoyed how it sounds. <laughs> This is like you just listening to the podcast. Basically, so. yeah. It's me in my car driving to Sacramento going, well, I guess there's nothing else in the iPod. I guess I'm go listen to this. So how was it having the first time you've heard this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> it makes me want to see the movie, to be honest. It, it, the, the podcast is almost like a selling point for the movies and themselves. Because it, especially when we say don't watch it, people want to watch it because they want to know how yeah, bad it is. Yeah, Actually, But this I, one, I though. That drives people more yeah. than when we give recommends like yeah. this movie. They'd rather see like well, a rally. I'm going to start out by saying this is one of the worst movies ever produced. Like it is a fucking disaster from start oh, to finish. this is Samurai Cop bad. In the best way possible. Mm. This to me is, I mean, seriously, one of the top tippy top of the bin. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Like, I love this movie. Yeah. I was watching it going, like, everything is so wrong. Like, yeah. it just, so many moral issues. Like, so yeah, many, I really want to see this. So many I get the random errors. stood on his couch went, that's what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> yes, yeah. That's I, what I was like, these episodes this, for. Yeah. This is what a movie is supposed <laughs> to be. Like, this is what a Grindman movie should be. <laughs> This is great on every level. Please, wow. somebody make a Blu ray of this so you're shit. You're calling this like, the Grind please. Standard. Oh, yeah. This is, like, to me, it's like Dangerous Men, Miami Connection, wow. Night Force, and fucking Moving Target. Wow. Like, I, That's amazing. I love this movie. Yet again, a Blair Vember miracle. <laughs> yeah. This was so good in such a bad way. The queen like, has just smiled so, on us once yeah. again. So fucking good. Even though Linda's only in it for two minutes, boy, does she shine. It really, she does make the most of her minutes. Every scene Both is a disaster. Them. Every single scene is a complete <laughs> disaster. <laughs> they failed in every <laughs> possible uh, way like there it. is literally not a scene that has anything of value <laughs> <laughs> like, i love it like even the ending you're uh, like i guess i don't know it's great great so i can't yeah, wait this is what you would hope like a movie like tentacles would be but uh, yeah. it could never it could absolutely never. and i wonder how many people did go to watch tentacles after we said don't watch it oh i'm sure I'm every many. fucking yeah. listener yeah because i would get messages of people like it's not that bad i'm like yeah. well you know we just uh you're not watching it like i am you, you know, know what? taking uh, notes <laughs> grime and all-stars out there reach out to us let us yeah. know if uh if you're more likely to watch a film because we loved it or because we hated it yeah, yeah. what has driven you st- more strongly toward seeing these films and seeking them out what upsets me about this is that this movie is not readily available like yeah. it's really upsetting that it's impossible to find however we're living in an age there are currently maybe 20 to 25 boutique blu-ray labels who yeah. specialize in rare oh, bad please, movies please somebody Thankfully. pick this up someone Code right Red, now please. is working on the uh, original negatives and like oh, cleaning it God. up could you imagine if we got a full like a fucking widescreen version of this movie Restored oh, in 4K yeah. oh 4K restoration <laughs> oh I'm there man you think Janine's keeping this from happening <laughs> you think she's like do not fucking lock this shit down yeah. I doubt she had any say in the rides in this thing oh it's so good yeah. so uh yeah wonderful absolutely wonderful do you hear that sound 
Oh, I think I think I do. Bobby, wh- how do you think they fit in this? Uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, Hughes, as you pointed out, uh, this uh, the biker could not have been in two places at once. So I think much like uh, Skeet Ulrich had Matthew Lillard, uh, when the biker got turned on by Borgnine, not turned on by Borgnine, <laughs> no, it was not like we did. When the biker was taken out. Uh, if you were to look just off camera behind some bushes. Bobby was there in a biker costume going, oh, shit, and, and ran <laughs> ran back to the back of the straight arrow, jumped in and went, drive, drive, drive. <laughs> and as it pulled out, it barely bumped another car, flipped, and Bobby was ejected nude from the van onto the ground holding a glossy 8x10 of DeVito. <laughs> All right. I'll pick it up from there. Popcorn Hughes. Popcorn Hughes. We see the straight arrow rolling down the street, and it stops in front of Mr. Spencer's house. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby and Vito pop out. We look down. Bobby has the eight by ten all folded up in his hand. Oh, he's just looking for his daddy. He's just looking for his daddy. <laughs> so when when Linda ran the ran Spencer's DNA, it entered the database, oh, no. and they found his son. <laughs> it so wasn't they, a daughter. It wasn't it was a daughter. A son. Oh, was so like sleepaway camp. They walk down the driveway, and Linda's there <laughs> slapping. <laughs> slapping of the envelope on her palm waiting for them to come up and there's also the lawyer he inherits that whole fortune <laughs> and they live their it's life it's all out. yours Bobby it's all yours ah, jacuzzi and everything I, I look back to I love that by the way that's great saying. that's wonderful I think back to the very beginning of the movie where we saw the straight arrows cousin I feel like Bobby DeVito maybe went on vacation and they saw that van and they picked up a topless woman like what? Bobby that could be us we could be those guys that get the... T- Did you see? I told you we should come to Miami. There's topless women that just run into the vans. We don't even have to use the rag. Like, we don't have to use the chloroform, the rag. You don't even have to say, are you into studs? They just run right into the van, Bobby. I told you Miami's the place to be. And Bobby just comes up from a pile of cocaine and just goes, huh? <laughs> Man, how do you think uh, <laughs> Bateman fit into this? <laughs> so here's, fit how, into here's, what I, here's what I picture me. Straight arrow is barreling down, uh, slowly <laughs> creeping down a neighborhood. Right, stops. Straight arrow. The music, Sammy Johns, kind of turns down. And uh, they pull in front of this house, and there's music coming out of it. Yeah, it's kind of a keyboard. and maybe, uh, Bobby goes, you bring now? Yeah, Bobby. And Bobby holds up an 8x10 glossy, and it's of uh, Linda Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Did we know? Are we, I don't see you around. The video goes, Bobby, you sure? Did we know? I don't think you're in the right movie. <laughs> <laughs> and they look straight, in, straight into the barrel of the lens and they say, Man down. <laughs> and they peel out. Okay. Yes. Do you think, by the way, well, Linda said she had kids. <laughs> Like, what if at one point one of her kids showed up and it was Bobby? Oh, that'd be so good. <laughs> He's like, ma'am. <laughs> so he got he the just, hair. He just shows up at the hospital. <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> you haven't been home in days. <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you think maybe you have like a, a Linda Blair Bobby movie where you kind of switch the roles and like Linda's the daddy character, Bobby's the Allison oh, character? Geez. <laughs> Oh, God. oh my god, I can just see him like in that Miami Heat jersey as his like pink armpit of hair. His 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 orange his orange arm hair just poking out of it. And she's like, she's so turned on. <laughs> and she, he goes, You got any coke? <laughs> and then he bends down in front of their friends. <laughs> oh, she walks in on him in the bath. <laughs> The beater oh. replaced the dog after it was killed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Anybody got anything else to add? Oh, thanks for joining oh, us on a successful week for Blair Member. Blair Absolutely. Member Part 3. Man, uh, thank you for being here, even mm-hmm. though you didn't watch the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he watched the absolute wrong picture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he just goes, where's Linda? Does she write this? <laughs> direct this? I don't know. Thinking maybe we were doing this for Christmas or something. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, I thought you guys were just getting really, really ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's her uh, April of 2018. You're already you're already caught up. So grindhousefilm.com, Facebook, where the Grindbit Podcast, Twitter uh, at Grindpod. Yeah. Chris, you you have the Instagram there. Yeah. Uh, the Grindbit Podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can join us on our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash/Grindbit, where you get our bonus episodes. There's two a month. We just did. Uh, how to uh, get dot 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 revenge 
our last one with uh, Linda Blair in it, which is uh, great. Uh, and Chris just sent out everybody's uh, special Blair Vember pins. Yeah, people have started receiving them. That's right. Seeing that on social media, it's been great to see. Yes, yeah. thank you. Keep tweeting the, that at us, guys. We really like those. Retweet if you want one. Go ahead and join. Uh, bigger than Dugan level or above, you'll get a pin. Yeah, and uh, so next month, by the way, we're getting close. Is uh, December. Oh, boy. And we'll see uh, what's going on in that month. Mm. And there might be a little bit of a, you know, it wouldn't be a December without some sort of special treat for the the grind bin patreon so let me just tell you next month if you thought this month was good to be a patreon member oh my god just wait until december oh yeah. santa's not the only one coming down your <laughs> chimney <laughs> oh boy that's that works on many <laughs> levels bobby <Ooh>. many. <laughs> yeah bobby put a shirt on